Alright, hello everyone. Just let me kill some music here. 
Is it killed? Now, where's my face at? Can't find my face. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Hey, buttons, and I hit the right ones. <laughs> All right. Uh, Grumpy Scamp says, love the Gazarians. Man, I started a game with them the other night, and they're really crazy fun. Yes, they are. I'm going to have some crazy fun today. Yeah, I had to come back and play them. I'm not planning to stream every weekend, but I figured I'd come back and do a run with them today. So, uh, yeah, uh, the join thing for entering names isn't working. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, I tried to get it running before stream here, but uh, anyways, we'll work around that for today. Yeah, so welcome, everyone. Ah, thanks for stopping by. Good to see you. And uh, Grumpy says he is going to be here, but he's not so active because he's playing Starfield. Isn't everybody playing that? I don't know. I'd still The only thing I've seen of that game is your little uh, uh, first impressions. That's all I've seen of it. I haven't watched any other footage. Diamond, hey, how are you going? How are you doing, buddy? I woke up late, but I'm here, just lurking in the first 20 minutes or so. Need to feed the cat, and make coffee, and wash up. Well, you don't have to wash up on my account. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so welcome everyone. And uh, before we get going, I just want to thank Matrix and Slithering once again for allowing me to preview this uh, last weekend. That was awesome. I had a really good time for nine hours. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I can't believe I streamed nine hours. This game is such a... It just sucks me in, man. Time doesn't exist when I'm playing this. It really doesn't. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks Matrix, Slithering, and uh, thanks for the key. Um, I, I get my keys free because I'm part of the beta team, but I did buy a couple copies for some friends. So, um, I try to give back that way. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, uh, hope everybody's uh, doing well and you yeah, grab the DLC and having good fun with it. Uh, uh, Grumpy Scamp is apparently. Yeah. Uh, hands. Okay. Yeah. Just a quick note. If I don't, I just noticed that now I just happen to look over at the right time. Uh, if you happen to subscribe and I don't see it um hands i didn't catch your last name sorry thanks for subscribing if i don't see it, it's because i don't get an alert to it if i'm not looking at this screen at the particular time that pops up then i don't see it so there was a couple of uh, subs last week that i didn't even see so uh, if you're one of them welcome aboard and uh, glad to have you so yeah uh, grumpy says the new dlc is great yes it is and uh private lsd how are you doing man i uh, hope you're not having any hdr issues no I streamed this game for nine hours last week, and it performed beautifully. Uh, RAM was flatlining the whole time. No problems. I had zero problems all the, for the whole nine hours. So, um, yeah. No, it's uh, it's in a good state right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who else we got? Uh, Mr. Roboto. Yeah, joined the greatest gazillion of them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's Nightbot. Nightbot is working, but I just can't get that join command to actually. Act. Let me just check one more time to see if that went through. No, no, it's not going. So that's not working today. So if, I, if I'm, I'm just going to name characters. I'm not going to go too crazy on naming stuff. We generally don't have enough uh, people watching to, uh, to name everything anyway. So we'll name our characters, but that'll be kind of it. I'm not going to worry about uh, ship designs or ship names unless we get a really good ship and I just want to name it, then we'll do it. But uh, yeah. So, Leaf Season Mag, ba Mag Bag, how are you? White Dragons, 1414, good morning. Yes, it is morning. It's 8 a.m. here in North America. I'm not sure what time it is in your area. Ah, let me know. Let me know where you're from, what time it is. It's interesting info for me. Um, yeah, I kind of think this will be kind of like new stream time. Um, I thank God I didn't do that nine hours last week, of starting at 6 p.m. or something. It wouldn't have been up till 3 in the morning. That's wake-up time, not bedtime. Yeah, I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and then I play games right up until work time, then I go to work. So, I told my boss that, and he says, uh, you play games from 2 a.m. till you come to work? I said, yeah. I said, what else am I supposed to do at that hour? He just looked at me and went, sleep, you moron. <laughs> yeah, hey, I don't want to sleep at 2 a.m. Come on, I want to be up. <laughs> 6 a.m. for White Dragons, yeah. Uh, Private LSC says, my uh, potato computer does not like the HDR settings for this game. Yeah, um, yeah, just go to the, the lower one, whatever that is. I'm not sure what it's called. Yeah, they got a whole bunch of options that you can adjust now uh, to help your performance if you're running a, a lower-end machine, but yeah. 
yeah so um anyways uh, i got i got another 16 gigabytes of ram so whatever i play today i can continue playing right to the end game now i'm short a couple cores cpu cores but i'm sure they're allowing for like 4x speeding and everything and i don't do that so i'm sure i'll be fine right to the end of the game now so yeah i got that bumped up to 32 gig now so that's uh that's pretty good and for anybody watching the bud down below in the description there will be zero timestamps <laughs> <laughs> zero none <laughs> i did six hours of those last week on that pod and i almost drove myself crazy doing it i got to the six hour mark and i found myself criticizing myself why are you doing that you stupid old fart <laughs> at that point i said that's enough <laughs> i shut it down so fair warning if you ever get the chance to watch nine hours of your own game footage walk away just go go outside do something else <laughs> it's not fun <laughs> So yeah, I got up to six hours done, and the rest of it, I, I, I'm not probably not gonna. Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit of a chore, and you know what? I got sick of my own face and voice by that point. I couldn't stand listening to myself anymore. I don't know how you guys do it. Oh well. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, today's uh, bud, it's going to be more directed towards the the uh, the new player. If you're new to the game, ask questions. If you're not new to the game, you have a question, ask anyways. Um, but yeah, we're still going to be kind of slow paced, but I'm not going to tutorialize everything again. I'm not going to go through our base designs and tell you what each component does to all these numbers. I'm not going to do that kind of thing. In fact, I'll be using the auto designer for quite a bit of the, that kind of thing. I want to try to push ahead a little bit quicker today. I saw a comment. It apparently took me uh, four and a half hours to get through the first decade of the game. So I should probably step that up a little bit. So yeah. Yeah, so I won't be drilling down and doing the whole tutorialized thing. So if you're a new player, uh, there'll still be some good info here for you, but uh, I'm not going to drill down and show everything about the game. We're just going to play today. So uh, Grumpy Scam says, yeah, the nine hour video is pretty long, but I watched it all in the background. Yeah, I guess it's good background noise. If you can stand listening to that one. <laughs> uh, Boxster, we all need the, sta the timestamps. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, it's it's a hard to do, man, watching yourself. And then <laughs> there is one spot I, I literally cringed and just wanted to take the freaking video down because I was trying to math the price of steel and I came up with 1.5 is equal a uh, 100 times 1.5 is 1500, everybody. <laughs> I was watching that and I literally I have a freaking bruise right here from doing this. That was kind of rough to sit through. I cringed so hard when I went, I had that, what the hell's wrong with my head math? But um, I'm streaming, I'm a little nervous, so my brain isn't really working that well. It doesn't really work well to begin with, so. Yeah. So. <laughs> there was a couple moments in there I did stuff, and I was like, what the hell am I talking about? It's like, yeah, so. Don't take everything I do with a grain of salt. Yeah, just, just. <laughs> I'm not the end all to be all for info here. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, so the pace for today is going to be a bit quicker. We'll get through things a bit quicker. I won't be uh, drilling right down to stuff. Um, the time we got, we're pretty much at eight o'clock now. Um, I was going to try, <clears throat> excuse me, I was going to try a trying start for today, and I did a couple of test runs in that, and we're not doing that today. That slows me down even more. You don't want me slowing down even more. No, 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 no. So we're going to do a more normalized run, and I'm going to do my same startup with the uh, planet with the asteroids around it. Not because it's easier, just because it's a little quicker. Because starting at a gas giant takes me a little longer to build out, so I'm trying to compress things down a bit with our setup. So yeah, uh, and that's kind of what we're doing today. <clears throat> and there's no, there should be zero ads on this live stream. No ads on the live stream. If you're watching the VODs, you should get one pre-roll as you come in, and that's it. Let me know if you get more. It's not much I can do about it, but I'm curious to see if you guys get any more. If you do, that's you two putting them in, and I get nothing for that. So, yeah. Uh, the alias set you command. Oh, that's probably me testing. Yeah, Nightbot's not like my join command anymore. Oh, well, anyways, we're not going to worry about that. I'm just going to get the game up and running. And there we go. Casper Minning, hey, how are you, man? Good to see ya. Yeah, I'm guessing it's early mid-afternoon in Europe right now. Um, North America's still rubbing the sleep out of their eyes. So, Okay, there's the game. We'll just pop over that. Boom, there we go. 
All right. So I'm here. I got my coffee. I'll be sipping on this. So old man plus coffee equals many breaks today. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> uh, what space race is on the menu today? Oh, we're playing the Gizurians today. I wanted to play them last week, but everybody else was playing them, so I went with the Camino. I'm probably not going to continue that particular game on. That's probably done. This one today, I do plan to come back and continue this one. So, I, provided I don't get my butt kicked, of course. So, uh, excuse me while I go buy the DLC. Oh, good for you. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's, it's a really good one. Uh, you'll probably like both the races. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like If you like a more aggressive style... Gazurians are ready to go. Do you like to lay back and just sort of wander through the tech tree and look for info and stuff throughout the galaxy? The Camino are the way to go. Both races are very specialized and they're very good at what they do. So I'm super happy with them. I'm probably going to be just gushing over this race the whole time I play today because I just think the character models, the ship models, everything is just so good. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, 2 o'clock there. Yep. Okay. Awesome. All right, so, yeah, like I said today, uh, we're going to play Gazurians. Uh, more or less the same kind of setup, but it's going to go faster, and it's going to be quite a bit different. Uh, it's not going to be the exact same as the uh, the Camino build-out, so we have some other challenges we've got to get over. So, I guess we can get going. Um, yeah, we're 8 o'clock, so I guess we'll get started. I tend to let the leading time go for 15 minutes before we get started, and then I'll put a... St oh, yeah, we'll put the one time stamp in the VOD where it just starts right now, so... All right, so start a new game, and look at that. I, do, I, I have a little bit of a warning on this now. I got 32 gigs, well, 31.86 gigs, close enough. But I'm still missing two CPU cores, so. Leaf Season Mag Bag. Uh, I know the Gazarians have higher reproduction rate. I know that's probably going to be to get you more pop taxes, but what else more do population, uh, does more population get you? Um, more expansion, uh, all your uh, outlying area, uh, colonies will grow a lot quicker. Yeah, wait till I put down my first uh, my first uh, external colony and see how fast that grows. And especially if we start doing the scouring and the breeding world stuff, just <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I had Gazarian in the video title. I'm blind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we had uh, discovery dates. There's all kinds of good stuff there. So, uh, so yeah, we're gonna go with the spiral again, ten by ten. Is this kind of my comfort uh, size? So I'm glad I got the RAM that I can actually play right through now. So we'll uh, go to the next one, and we will be pre-warp again, restless hard. I don't really monkey with this. I put it on hard, and I leave it there, and I adjust other things for my own difficulty. So um, I don't go too crazy with this. It just does things that it makes spying harder, so you lose all your spies all the time and stuff like that. So it is a little bit challenging. But for, day, for today, we're just going to go hard. Um, yeah, ex extreme harsh runs are terrible. Like, you start having to pay your private sector. Yeah, the, the state has to pay the private sector. The, the taxing is that bad, it's reversed. <laughs> so, we, we don't want to go extreme. Uh, normal and then uh, uh, random paths and uh, only the next research. It's a little cluttered if we put them all on, so I'm not going to bother with that. All right, pirates. Very many. Strong. Yep. I don't, I'm not going very strong for pre-warp. Very strong is fine if you're starting at a level 1 or level 2. Uh, you can usually uh, deal with those uh, cruisers that they spit out. But uh, pre-warp is pretty tough. Yeah. Double Robs! Hey, how are you? Uh, you're going to be without warp drives a lot longer than the other stream? No. No, we'll be fine. No. Nope. Uh, they are slower research, but don't, don't worry. We won't be that long getting out of pre-warp. Uh, it's going to be about the same time. A um, couple years later... Camino are really good at getting into pre-warp, but yeah, we will be longer, actually. I see what you're getting at. Yeah, the Caminos are really quick to get out of pre-warp, but this is kind of, these guys are kind of average for other races. Yeah. So, all right, anyways, yeah, we're going to be strong only, not very strong, because cruisers and pre-warp are uh, pretty rough. That's a rough start. Uh, we're going to go ca uh, average, but this time we're going to respawn. I figure we, you know, more meat for us, right? More uh, ships for us to capture, more disassemblies. Uh, we get bonuses for disassembling and repairing ships, so let's let them respawn. We'll have that uh, inc or that income all through the game. They'll keep popping up every time we kill one. It'll be a kind of a whack-a-mole game. See how it works out. I, I really, I think I played with this once, 
and I didn't like it, but I think in this case, we'll uh, actually make use of it. All right, so <clears throat> colonization, uh, same thing as last time, 100%, uh, 300, which is default. And then rare, rare, I've cranked that back from normal. So uh, I think I was at 125 last game. I think I was here. But I have rolled pre-rolled a game, so I'm just going to go with the same settings I rolled the game with. Um, I did pre-roll a game. I'm going to roll two maps again. If I don't get what I'm looking for, we'll load that game in. I just rolled it up last night. Went, yep, that's a good one, and saved it, and off it went. All right, so today we're going to play the Gizurians. Um, I do have a pre-recorded series planned. Um, I'm going to play like a random race on uh, a trying start, and you'll see just what I mean by how slow it is. I, I need the power of editing to do that so I can cut out uh, footage if it gets dead. Um, time, uh, time, uh, time warping or the footage or time lapsing the footage will be another thing I'll need to do. It's not suited to a live stream. So I'm not going to do a try and start. We're just going to do a regular start with the Gazurians. There they are. Yep. Uh, you are going space locusts. Yep. We are going to be space locusts. Absolutely. Yeah. So Gazurians, they are uh, insectoid race with four arms and they can fly short distances and uh, they are aggressive and friendly, though um, not very intelligent. But uh, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be able to keep up, maybe. <laughs> they often make inflammatory claims about their own uh, uh, tribal superiority, vicious, viciously mocking and insulting other tribes. So they do fight amongst themselves. This leads to frequent inter-tribal battles. Uh, Gazarians have an intense dislike of other alien races, especially non-insectoid races. This trait makes them very difficult and peaceful to assimilate Gazarian the Newman Empire. So, yeah, they don't assimilate very well at all. Have a high reproductive rate, yes, we already know that. And Gazarians typically build their cavernous underground homes in rock areas of uh, uh, rocky uh, desert, sandy desert planets, but can also be found on desert, savanna, or volcanic planets. So, well, the, uh, the Camino rather hate existing with other races. The Camarians love other races to eat. Oh, the Gazarians love other races too. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we are going to pig out. <laughs> Very aggressive, uh, 15, minus 15, reckless. Uh, dependability uh, is kind of neutral, minus 10. Reproduction is rapid. Uh, migration tendency is adventurous, and assimilation rate is resistant. So we don't assimilate very well. So somebody invades one of our planets. It's going to be a while for them to bring us around. Hey, colonization suitability, there we go there. Uh, volcanic is, uh, is one good option, but the rest of it is just desert, rocky desert. Uh, uh, savanna deserts that sort of thing uh bonuses we'll just look at briefly we'll look at the main list once we get into the game but yeah we do uh sucker research a little bit and we're not very diplomatic we're very good at boarding assault which we'll be utilizing to hopefully the max uh we're good with troop stuff too maintenance saving ship uh repair rates troop research all that kind of stuff and we spawn uh, uh admirals and generals quicker and ad uh, ambassadors and scientists less often so and we have some special features. So do you want me to read through these all one by one while we're not even in the game? Or do you want to just go through them as we kind of come across it? I think we'll just kind of deal with it as we come across it. I'm guessing people who are watching this have already watched other people play it. So you kind of know what all this stuff is. But we have a Waste Nothing, which basically gives us uh, bonuses to our uh, tech whenever we disassemble something. So if we send stuff for retirement, we get bonuses for it. Uh, the scouring, whenever we colonize or conquer a new colony, we can scour it and get all kinds of bonuses that way. We'll look at that more when we get in. Rivals, rivalries come up, so we have power struggles between two characters. we got to choose one. We get uh, One gets a bonus, the other one gets killed. <laughs> Probably, I'm assuming, eaten as well, but yeah. Yeah, Casper, the join command isn't working. Uh, if I'm going to name something, I'm just going to look over at chat and pick a name. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it, so I tried two weeks in a row to get it going, and it's not working. So uh, my Scientheus isn't around, so I don't know. Um, he usually he set all that up for me. I'm not sure how that all works. So, uh, yeah, breeding world we can like scour and then turn it into breeding world, so we can uh, do a double whammy on our new uh, colonized uh, planets or uh, invaded planets. Tribal conflict, short-term empire-wide boost to Gazarian population growth with an accompanying happiness penalty. So. And Swarm Command, this is a good one. Special targeting computer for ships that allow increased targeting accuracy based on the total numbers of ships in the fleet. We want big, wide fleets. We want lots of ships in them. 
So we're more apt to maybe include a bunch of escorts in our fleets. Right? Just have them as a big picket line. Yeah, so that's going to be good. And we got a couple unique leader traits, a gifted conduit, controlling mind, and our leaders may or may not get these while we play. Plus 10% corruption reduction. And then uh, generals get uh, Swarm Lord or Larva Overseer. Swarm Lord is good because if you get poor recruiter, Swarm Lord cancels it out. So that's beautiful. If you can get good recruiter and Swarm Lord, that's 20% on troop recruitment. So that's awesome. All right, and we get some starting tech, missile weapons, and uh, pulse weapons are kind of our focus. So I'm going to play thematically. We'll be going down those two trees um, into beams a little bit, maybe. But uh, we're going to try to play thematically. So basically, if our race focuses on two types of weapons, we're going to uh, go down that line. So we'll role play that. And we get ground combat, some countermeasures and maneuvering stuff as well. We also get special hive hangars and high fighter bases for our planet. So we're very, we're very fighter focused. And we have some hex armor as well. And then we have disallowed tech, which is basically the regular versions of all this stuff, the regular uh, star fighters and that. So those are disallowed. We can't use those. And we have race victory conditions, which I'm not ever worried about, but I use it to sort of track my progress. But we got to build the most military ships in the galaxy. So lots of escorts is what I'm thinking. Uh, the most uh, have the most colonies in the galaxy. Expand uh, as much as we can. Spend the most time at war in the galaxy and capture the most ships and bases in the galaxy. We're very warlike, and we are self hegemony as our preferred governments, but we're allowed feudalism and republic as well. And our troops are kind of eh, mid range, not, nothing really special. Uh, not bad on defense, but the attacks a bit weak. So uh, most liked races are insects. Most disliked races are cominos, humans, which we'll probably come across. Yeah, we absolutely hate them. That'll probably be instant war when you come across them. Ah, unacceptable views. Morning, like a bug version of the board. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, they're not really a hive mind, though. That's, uh, we'll just get into that next. They're, they're a cell hegemony. <laughs> so basically, they live in cells. The cells can sort of interact in thought, but the different different cells can't interact. They, they can't uh, they can't uh, be a hive mind together. So there's a lot of conflict there. So that's kind of what the hell cell, a cell hegemony is. Um, yeah, these uh, they're they're they're, uh, they're ruled by hegemons, and uh, they form. Uh, they form larger cells, which makes decision, uh, decisions for the uh, society. Usually the hegemons are able to form connections with one another, but not always as strongly as within their own cell. So there are citizens that can sort of talk to the other cells, but not many sort of thing, I guess. Yeah. So they're not a huge collective mind, uh, hive mind, but uh, they sort of exist sort of separated. And then there's lots of tribal conflicts because of that. But do they taste like lobster? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, and then there's a bunch of other population uh, 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 bonuses here for our uh, government. Uh, population growth plus. Ooh, a plus. Look at that. Uh, all research, another five. So we're 15% all research um, on, on the negative. Uh, we have a bit of counter espionage, which is beautiful. Following happiness and a bunch of troop stuff, facility maintenance savings, all kinds of stuff there. We'll look at the master list once we get in the game to find out what our total. Uh, values are on these on this stuff okay so luxury resource consumption rate is 25 percent less which means our luxuries will last longer beautiful and uh inspiring presence and demoralizing character trait likelihoods are 100 percent for inspiring and it's minus 70 for demoralizing so and they just basically inspire other characters at the at the same location so if they're demoralizing they kind of bring them down if you're inspiring they bring them up a typical leader term is 30 years, a direct appointment, and it's slightly disruptive, usually not a big deal. You just got to kind of watch newly invaded uh, colonies right around that time. So if you have a brand new invaded colony and you got a leader change, there could be a bit of a problem there, but otherwise you're usually pretty good. Uh, later game might be different. I haven't really played uh, too far into the late, late game or anything with these guys. So, And we start with exploration scanners, improved sensors, and coordinate control. So those are some stuff I usually go for fairly early. So I'm glad they're available right away. Uh, Empire name, I think I'll just let the the game uh, name us. 
And, oh, no, no, we're not doing a trying start. We're not. No, we're doing normal. Uh, that's left over from a run I just tried. <laughs> we're not doing a trying start. We're not. We're not. That's going to take me longer than last week. So we're just going to do a normal start uh, just uh, for pacing purposes. But like I said, my pre-recorded is definitely going to be a trying start. And then these starts are trying. And it'll be pre-warping. I'll just let them play say, uh, say anywhere because the next screen is probably going to dictate where we are. Now, there is one thing I thought of doing just before I come into stream, though. And I think I did this last night. I think I told you. I think I did this. I'm pretty sure I did. I added another empire. I played a different game since I rolled the map. But I added another empire at the bottom here. And I made them Tekken. And I made them nearby. So, <laughs> I brought lunch. <laughs> it's basically what I've done. I brought lunch. So, we're going to have a Tekken star right beside us. So, you'll have lunch out on them. And we're going to have three wild cards. So, basically, I've set this up to have four average, four distant, and four very distant with the one nearby. And then we're going to have three wild cards, which could spawn anywhere right beside us, far away from us. We don't know. So that, uh, that keeps things going. And in the next screen, uh, this is set up for a sandbox again. Um, I set it up like this so I can track my progress against the other empires. And, yeah, so I can just see how I'm doing with the other empires. They basically got to own the whole galaxy to satisfy this, so it's never going to happen. But All right. So there we are. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to roll two games. If I don't get what I like, then I'll load up the one I got last night. So just hit start, and we'll see how that works out. Uh, Leaf Season says, not a high mind, but uh, still psychic and not as much personal ego as some of the other races. Like an empire of many sm small hive mind lights. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they live in little cells, and the cells don't sometimes get along, and there's yeah, internal conflict and stuff like that. Another sip of coffee. That was a lot of talking. Yeah, I can't believe that I talked for nine hours last week. I'm surprised my voice didn't give out. I was shocked when four and a half hours rolled around and I thought I'd only been here an hour. What are we at right now? 33 minutes. Okay, that feels like 33 minutes. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I love I love Tekans. I like uh, love all kinds of rats. I look forward to seeing you eat them. Who wants rats on a stick? Yep. Yeah, so I threw one nearby Tekken, so yeah, I'm bringing lunch. So, the only thing that made me think of that was um, I actually spawned an actual Tekken right beside me on one roll. I thought, oh, that's interesting. So I've kind of been putting them there ever since. Yeah. Admiral Thurnall Screed, how are you, man? I still got to name an Admiral after you someday. <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to do it, and then I don't hear from you again, and I don't see your name, and I don't do it. That's a good admiral name. I like it. Yeah, Mr. Roboto. Within cells interlinked, yeah. Yeah, so I got another 16 gigabyte. I mentioned that already. And I noticed the game does use a bit more RAM. Before, with 16 gig, it would sit at 7 and for the early game. And then uh, I noticed now it's more up at bottom 10. The game just knows there's more RAM to work with, so it's using more of it. Which is fine. Okay, so um, we'll go through this once and... I won't read it again. Uh, faction known as the Living Jarjader Horde. Jar Jar oh, God. <laughs> Thanks, game. <laughs> the Jire Horde. Maybe I'll just call it the Jire Horde or something. Our government is Cell Hegemony. We are Gazarian who are typically very aggressive and reckless. Gazarians have natural skills in a war weariness reduction, boarding assault strength, boarding defense strength, construction research, troop re uh, research, repair rate, troop maintenance savings. <gasps> Ship maintenance savings, burns of general or generals and admirals. So, our leader is going to be renamed. He's skilled in war weariness reduction, good, and armor research, awesome. And our colony is uh, going to be renamed as well. I'm not trying to pronounce that all again. Uh, Sandy Desert in the uh, in that system. So nearby is a rocky metallic moon. So we are we are on an actual planet, which means we should have some asteroids. And that's kind of the start I'm looking for. So we might be all right with this one. It's like a decent starting spot. And it doesn't look like a great system, but we can probably work with it. Pause. Okay. And we have a 40 suitability. That's not bad. That's sort of the mid-range of the normal difficulty. It can go anywhere from 37 to 43. 
So we're kind of mid-range on that. Uh, we do have a rune. Uh, just a few smattering of planets, though, but that's fine. Oh, nice wide open area here. Oh, look at that. So we should have some tasty Tekans right near us. And there's really no problems. I think we'll go with this one. It's a little lean on the home system. There's no real, there's no surprises, no uh, abandoned bases or anything. No pirates either. Uh, slightly disappointing on that. I don't know. Mmm, asteroid, yes. They do make the game start. Uh, what system do you have? Uh, system as in computer or in the game? Star system or computer system? Uh, it's a, what is that? 10700K, I think. Intel, i7, <clears throat> something like that. So, um, I, I don't know. This is kind of lean, but otherwise the neighborhood looks fine. I think we'll, I think we'll just do this one. That'll be fine. All right, welcome home to the Gardener system. <laughs> you know what? Okay, let's do this. Uh, this is something you can do in your game. Just to point this out, is if you rename your star. All your ships that you build will be named sort of after your star. So if you, let's just do this. So come into the editor. I'm, this is tricky because you don't want the game to, be, to begin yet. So let's come into the game editor for a minute. We'll click on the star and we'll just call this, uh, I don't know, uh, mag bag, the system of mag bag. There. There. We're in mag bag system. <laughs> Okay, so just a quick thing, when you exit the editor, the game starts. I don't want it to start yet, so we need to hit pause the minute we come out of this. So we exit editor, pause. Okay. I just didn't want the game starting up yet. So there we got the mag bag system. Right there, and there it is, the mag bag system. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and then all the ships that we build now will have mag bag kind of incorporated into the names. We'll see that as we go forward. So that's one little thing you can do. It sort of personalizes the game for you. If you want to name the star your own name, then ships will be named after you. So, but just know that exiting the editor, the game unpauses. So. All right, so here we are. Uh, we are definitely going to rename that in a second here. But actually, might as well do it now. Ah, Grumpy Scamp says, mm, mm, Tekens, yes. I'm going to call this Scamp Prime. How's that? There. Named after our good friend Grumpy Scamp. Our home world of Scamp Prime. All right. So that's how I'm going to name things. I'm just going to look over to chat, pick a name. So if you want your name in the game, say something. <laughs> yeah, the join thing isn't working, so I'm not sure what's wrong there. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we do have a rune, but that's pretty much it. We do have one gas giant. And we should have everything we need to start here. We did start a normal system, so looking good. All right. So let's have a look at our empire first. <laughs> yeah, Scamp Prime has a sound to it. Yes, it does. All right. Um, oh, one thing I do want to do. Uh, do you care about music? I didn't even hear it in the VOD last time. You know what? Maybe we'll just go without it. Yeah, I had it on, but it was so low, it, I hardly even heard it in the VOD. But don't worry about it right now. So, we are a cell hegemony, and we are the living Jarjadur horde. I can't rename our our, uh, our empire, unfortunately. Uh, so, if I name my star, star big as dick, yep. Yep, you'll get ships called that. Yep. <laughs> uh, Seamus Finnegan, hello, how are ya? Good to see ya. Uh, Leaf Season says, may I ask to be the first scientist you generate? Sure. Uh, Leaf Season, just remind me. I'll try to remember. <laughs> I got an old man brain, so it doesn't really remember a whole lot. Um, yeah, remind me again. Uh, we should get a scientist pretty quick. Um, yeah. Okay, anyways, we'll get started, and I'll look at chat in a bit here. Okay, so we are Cell Hegemony, and we are the Living Jarjadur Horde. I just don't have to say that name too many times. I kind of stumble over it, so that's why I kind of renamed a few things here. 
so yeah, we uh, have a population growth of, of 5% war weariness. Uh, we kind of went through all this when we came into the game. So I won't go we'll look at all this in the next bonus screen. So I'll just scroll down. We'll keep going. We talked about all this coming in too. We don't need to go over that again. And there's our stuff that we get free when we start the game up. So we'll just pop over to our Empire sources for all, or, uh, bonuses from all sources. So this is one I go through kind of quickly, line by line, just to see where everything is. So all research is, uh, we got 10% uh, from the race and 5 uh, from our government. So we're at minus 15 right off the bat. So we're slower to research. We got armor research from our leader. We got troop research from our race. We have construction research from Scamp Prime. So we do have an actual uh, research bonus at our homeworld. That's important information for me. That means I can build a lab at Homeworld right away. <clears throat> uh, LJ Horde is probably easier to remember and say, oh, yeah, the LJ Horde. Yeah, I, I can't rename the Empire. It's not something you can do in the game yet. It kind of ticks me off that I can't, but it, it'll come. Uh, one of these patches will allow us to do it. So, yeah, we have not good at uh, diplomacy. We got war weariness, boarding assault stuff, uh, repair rates, troop maintenance stuff. Um, and we went through all that before and population growth yep wow look at this Copy happiness and growth both are positive <laughs> clearly a bug <laughs> it's fine but yeah you don't see that too often it's always in a negative right county espionage you get a bit of a bonus on troop recruitment plus 10 so even if we get a recruiter we'll be leveled at zero that's fine uh calling injection plus 15 which is good and yeah trade income uh from our government Yep. So, we have a leader. And our leader is going to be called Seamus Finnegan. You're right at the bottom. I just saw your name. So, I'm just going to grab the first name I see. That way, I'm not kind of picking and choosing stuff. Seamus Finnegan is our uh, fearless leader, our overlord, Seamus Finnegan. Or is it Seamus? I might be pronouncing that wrong. I pronounce everything wrong, so it's, it's probably wrong. <laughs> Anyways, Overlord Finnegan. There we go. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing Finnegan right. It's Seamus. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I thought I kind of figured I was pronouncing that wrong. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, European names pronounced different than North American, so I might stumble on that a bit. So anyways, he has War Awareness Reduction and Armor Research right off the bat. Beautiful. And he's sitting at Scamp Prime. Awesome. All right. Overlord Finnegan. Let's see what you're about when we get going. Okay. I'll pop into automation just for a quick sec. Um, I'm not calling, I'm not uh, automating my colony taxes or stock levels. Um, I am uh, manually controlling my funding. And other than that, everything's either on manual or suggest. And I'm just going to pop down to construction for just a minute. Uh, military, I've set my ship to always captured, so I won't go through that again. But I'm just going to come into uh, this one here. And I don't know why this defaults to rail guns. I think this might be a problem. I should probably report it, but it should be our default stuff. And I think we're blasters and missiles, pretty sure. That's what we come into the game with, that kind of that technology. Actually, I'm just popping it out. Yeah, blasters and missiles. So I'm going to set them up with that. Again, I'm going to play thematically. I'm going to role play what they start with. And I'm going to role play that a bit. Even though the Fritos are technically a better early game game uh, weapon. I'm just going to go with missiles. And uh, we'll see how we do. Uh, so, uh, what's this? Actually, that's the wrong one. This should be missiles. First one. And we'll go torpedoes on the second one. There. And we'll go beams here as a secondary. Uh, I'm playing manually. It doesn't really do much other than the suggestions in here will be more uh, geared towards what I said here. And intercept weapons, I'm just going to say blasters and beams. Beams as a secondary. So any suggestions the game makes or any uh, ship designs that the AI is going to do, it's going to follow this kind of stuff. So, unacceptable use. I learned two things already. You must be watching a different stream. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I'm doing for calling it or for automation anyways. So everything is under my control for now. And I hand stuff off to the AI as we progress through the game. I don't do this throughout the whole game. You just can't do that. That's impossible. So I do hand stuff back to the AI as we get going, but I do like to control my, the startup. And that's how we play the game. 
And that's how the stream's going to go. So I'm just kind of showing off how I play the game, how I enjoy the game. So that's kind of what today's stream is about. So coming over to funding, I just want to double check in here. This is kind of my default. I go zero reserved. I don't want to reserve 10% up here when it can be down here doing useful stuff. So I turn that off to zero. And this is more for my own visual reference, but I do monkey with these two values. I wasn't able to do that with the Camino run, so you'll see how, how I uh, handle this on, uh, on this run. All right, so. And none of these numbers are going to make sense, so we get going. And let's have a look at our home world for a sec. Okay, uh, I'm going to put troop recruitment on manual. I'm going to put our population uh, policies on manual as well. I got them sh uh, shut off in our main policy screen, but later on I might turn that on, and that way I don't have to go through all my plans and uh, adjust anything, turn all a bunch of stuff off. I can just uh, go through and select the ones I want to automate and go. So I kind of worked that a little bit backwards. And these numbers aren't going to make sense until a bit later, so I won't look through that too much, but... Our home world can grow to six and a half billion. We can exceed that too with various tux and uh, improvements and stuff. So that's what home world's about. Let's have a look at the ground here. So plus 40, uh, did I mention that? The normal starting is usually 37 to 43 on this level. So we're kind of in the middle. So that's fine. Uh, we have one unknown resource on the ground, a luxury, hopefully, if not silicon, would be a second choice. Uh, and as far as uh, stockpiles, uh, we have 12,000 Kazlon. If you start by a gas giant, you only start with six. And we got a uh, fairly good supply on the ground. Uh, silicon's a bit low, but uh, carbonite looks good. Okay, we'll see what we end up with on the ground as we go forward. So I don't build out too aggressively. That should be lots of stuff. So, and we got a few things in our queue, which we'll look at in a sec. All right. Scamp Prime, there it is. Ah. Okay. All right, so um, let's uh, go to our ships. Uh, these are the ships that are in here. I'm just going to manually control our exploration ship. I'm going to manually control our construction ship. And if you're new to the game, I'm kind of assuming you know where all these screens are and kind of what I'm doing, but... Uh, I'm assuming you've been through the tours and maybe watched a couple other videos or played the game a bit yourself, that sort of thing. So I'm not going to tell you where all the buttons are. I'm assuming you already know that. But feel free to ask questions. Um, I'm more than happy to answer if I know the answer. I don't profess to know everything, but I do play a lot of this. So. All right, and we're going to come into our ship designs and we're going to do something wild and funky. It's a little, uh, little uh, maneuver I call delete and obsolete. I can't delete those because we got ships already built on those, so we just have to obsolete those. So delete and obsolete, all gone. And I won't be as long-winded putting the stuff back this time. I'll just do the do a, a quick uh, <laughs> quick build out on that stuff. All right, so we go to science and we will drill down one lab. We're already there, so that's fine. And they're suggesting early warp fields, which we will definitely put in our queue first. And this is kind of the same every build out, but it does vary depending on what race and what startup situations we have. But um, these items I'll go through in a sec. I'm just going to queue them up here. Okay, so this is my early work build, early game build out each time. So we're going to go faster, we're going to get happier, we're going to get it safer. Basically, is what I'm doing. So these two items will make us happier by putting them on our spaceport, and these two items will make us safer by protecting our stuff. And I think that's all we have to do to actually hit play. So how to make out? Oh, we're only 49 minutes in. We're actually going to hit the play button here. <laughs> we get a drink of coffee here. Okay. We're playing. Within an hour, I did it. <laughs> Should be a fairly pirate resistant with your boarding strength, yeah? I've actually had the pirates hit me so, so soon and so fast that uh, I... Kind of destroyed all the ships before I got to capture any of them. It's like, okay, now they got captured. Where are they all? They're sitting in my fleet. Um, <clears throat> that's why I crank things up to trying and uh, make things a little more difficult for myself. Okay, a bit of a blurb here. I guess we'll go through it. Uh, there's never been a better time to be a Gazorian. Though that may not always be true, it might be a better time than the distant past. We cannot say for any certainty. Still, it is a very good time. We're in the cusp of transversing the great unknown, claiming all we find for ourselves. 
Our stories say once we spread amongst the stars, growing, expanding, multiplying, all fled from our relentless, unstoppable expansion. Then there are so many of us that made us as the greatest and the strongest. So they dominate in sheer numbers. Still, the past haunts us. How did we end up reduced to living on a single planet, growing, always growing, and always finding ourselves so short of space? What caused us to lose all we all that we once had? Did somebody take it from us? They must be made to give it back. We were once more. Each of us feels connected to the whole Gazarian kind, but that connection seems wrong, diminished, like muffled, muffled sounds heard through a wall. Where there are only voices, there, are only, there is only silence. The secrets of the former nature may be out there among the stars, and when we find that secret, we'll know who to blame, and we will devour them. Yes, we're going to eat everything. Yeah, insatiable appetite. So that has given us our advance in warp field experiments and research labs, and it also gives us 6% calling development. That's very good. And we did start at 17 from resource. That's dropping. We'll have a look at that in a sec. And 9% calling corrupt induction. Nice. And 9% construction research. That's what we're going to look at first. We'll build an elaborate at Homeworld. And 7% scenery, which is a scenery bonus, which uh, we'll deal with later. We don't have the tech to even uh, worry about that right yet. All right. <clears throat> so that's us started up. And we have a starship constructed already. So take me to it. There it is. There's our first ship. Check this out, eh? I love this ship set. Absolutely. Love These look like flies. And you get them in a swarm. That looks like a swarm of flies, which is amazing. Yeah, big hat tip to the uh, to the artists on this expansion for sure. Yeah, these are my absolute favorite race. Yep, I'm probably going to be gushing over some of this for a bit. So, anyways, we'll dismiss that. Um, we're going to select him actually, and we're going to send him to the moon to scan out our moon for us. So he's going to go off and do that. Off you go, buddy. All right, so he's going to do that. And there's our government. So due to our children government, we gain insights into exploration scanners, improved sensors, and coordinated control. So those are the three items that we saw as we were coming in. And there's a bit of info on that stuff right here. We have unknown items here at home. Yeah, that's that question mark we were looking at earlier. And there's our explorer. And we have uh, better resource scanners. I think the queen will get the same thing here. Now I'm thinking about it and uh, better short range sensors and command uh, uh, coordinated control to better command centers so that's our basic startup yeah the gazarian ships look awesome they do yeah uh the the Dayu were my favorite they they when they they come out it's like oh new favorite race and then now that these guys are like, oh new favorite race <laughs> 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 okay anyways uh we'll get going here uh so i'm just gonna kind of watch how uh, how this all unfolds our development rate as you can see we have six from other items which is that room we just uh, uncovered so six percent development uh, development there uh nine percent from resources and we don't have any luxuries at home so that nine percent is going to go away on us so if we bring up our spreadsheet we can uh check out this number here the private colony and here just pull up that one too uh, the private colony will drop down as we progress here. Um, that's just these, the, the, that bonus is going away from 9%. So we're going to lose 9% off of that 20,000. So we'll just let this go. Yeah, so... Uh, let's have a look through chat while that's running. 7% now. So you can see the private revenue is uh, actually dropping. Down to 6%. 5%, 1917, 18832, dropping. So it'll level off once it hits zero. And then we can see just exactly how much money we're getting. So if you check your finance right at the beginning of the game, right after you get your government net, it's going to show you a different number than you're going to be actually working with. So you've got to let this run out a bit to find out exactly what your uh, budget's going to be. And we're at zero, and that should say static in just a second here. And there it is. So we'll just hit pause for a sec. So this is our final startup uh, funding right here. 17,000 is our uh, private colony revenue, which is uh, after uh, corruption is taken out. So there's our complete planet. Corruption taken out. Leaves us that. 
we tax this, we have to pay support costs. So that comes off our taxes and that's what our final uh, taxing value is here. So that's our tax money and that's what we get to work with. And look at, yeah, we're actually funding something. That's awesome. And we'll carry on. So our Explorer is coming out. He's going to oh, uh, hit my tab key so we have a free camera. There we go. So here he comes. Way off he goes. Yeah, I do love this ship set. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, looking at the, uh, the planetary queue, we have a construction ship here. I'm going to get a... Uh, uh, spaceport design here in just a second. And just want to look through a couple things. Our leader, he should be getting some traits soon. He's got some more skills. High-tech research and sensors, so that's coming out. He only had the first two to begin with. So he's spawning traits as we play. So we'll get some more our, uh, skills. So we'll get some more traits, and he'll get a bit better as we go uh, right quickly here. And we should rush our work builds. Always do that after the opening... Uh, uh, blurb. Ladoya, hey, how are you, man? Good to see ya. And we have a general. Uh, on way too early on me. I prefer him not spawn right away, but oh well. We'll deal with him. I uh, gotta gotta recruit troops in order to keep his skills up. Oh, we got two question marks at home now. We got two resources here we don't know about. Awesome. That's a good start. All right. Work, reproduce, consume, praise the horde. Yes, praise the horde. The mighty, mighty horde. Overlord Finnegan. Come on, get some trades quickly. We need them. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, he's scanning their moon out now. Perfect. Uh, did they come with the scanners? No, that was a government bonus. So they don't have the resource scanners on them yet. No, so we'll have to actually design that. I am playing many, but you're generally... Yeah, sometimes they're delayed a little bit, which I prefer. Because then I don't have to build troops right away to sort of skill them up a bit uh it's actually kind of early i don't actually build a troop until after i get this because money money jumps up at that point so we have more cash to work with this number will basically double once we get this number or this uh, tech here so i tend to wait for that to happen then i build a troop okay well we need to go design our uh, first two stations the spaceport and the research station so let's just pop in and do that now i'm not going to be nearly as long-winded at this as i was last week so we're going to add new small spaceport and various stats and everything there we'll go through that again but we are going to manually create this because i want stuff in, in a certain order uh the base will build out in the order that i put the components on so we can start utilizing benefits from these components before the spaceport's even done and I'm going to start with the research lab, right in the only spot that we can build that. So we're going to plop that right there and change a bunch of stuff here. I'm not going to go through all the numbers. Just keep, if, you, if you're curious about this, go to the previous VOD. There's a whole bunch of timestamps that go through this bit by bit. So I'm not going to do that today, just in the interest of keeping things running. So I want my research points first. So as soon as the hull's built, we're going to build, build out our research points. Now I want to save some money on this particular station. We're going to cost 391 to actually support this station. Our command center and our crew systems have maintenance savings. Command center has 12, crew system has another, another 10. So before the station is even built, we save money. So that's the second thing I go for, our research, then the uh, maintenance savings, and then we come down here. And we put on two construction labs. So we'll build the research lab, get our savings. Now we can build other ships before this thing's even finished. So we'll just build out the rest of it. You can pop this open and have a look at what's required in the optional stuff. But I know what all this stuff is needed. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw it all on now without even looking. So just populate all this. See that list going down as I add stuff. Just follow the list. Build out what you need at this point. 
Uh, is there anything else we need? One more crew system. And that's it. That's that's a bare bones functional station. There's no weaponry, no defense, no anything, but it will give us research points. It will make, uh, save itself some money, and it will allow us to build ships. And that's all I need us to do right at this particular moment. A few suggestions here. We don't have the tech for any of that yet, so we'll just close that off, and we'll call this a Platform 1 Orbital Assembly last week. Much quicker. We're done. <laughs> Didn't take us half an hour. <laughs> and we'll add our research station as well, and pretty much the same thing. Uh, I'm sorted by roll, that's why I can't find anything. Okay. Uh, it builds 50% slower is the only thing we need to point out here. A bit of weapons increase and stuff. So once again, research labs, we have two spots in this station, so we'll put them in there. And then we want our maintenance savings to kick in. Beyond this, don't care. Just put all the other requirements on. Open the list and follow the list. And we'll put our uh, reactor. Yeah, put it there. Let's be tidy. And fuel cell. And a cargo bay. And we need to bring bring and drop off stuff here so we need a uh, cargo bay as well. I think I called that a docking bay. A well, cargo bay and a docking bay. So there's our list done and it's just saying we need some uh, materials. That's fine. I haven't mined anything yet so and I'll call this a lab one uh, orbital research. Look at that. Two stations done in the space of five minutes <laughs> instead of an hour like last time. We are finished. Okay, so I'm going to click these. Uh, it's this is The master switch is on manual anyways, but later on I'm going to automate stuff, so just so I don't have to go through and I can just uh, have everything on manual and put everything on auto that I want. So that's just a habit. You don't need to do that either. Okay, so we're still running. Construction ship. I'm going to wait till that construction ship is almost done because we have to pay maintenance on that station the minute we put it down. So it's going to sit in the queue and not build anything, so it won't even get the maintenance savings until it actually starts building. So we might as well just wait until that's about 90%, and then we'll plop it down and start paying the maintenance at that point. It's asking me to build it now, but I'm going to decline that. Uh, you will spawn generals often enough. It might be more resource efficient. Just ignore the guy and give us some. Yeah, no, no. That, quite often they get other skills that are good. So, you know, they'll have a good ground attack. So the troop recruitment really doesn't matter. So you throw him on an invasion force, right? So they, 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 do, they are useful. I don't, and I do not, I should point this out too. I do not ever, so I mean, 64%. Okay, oh, we scan the moon. I do not dismiss characters. This is a difficulty thing I give myself. Even if uh, uh, Overlord Finnegan here ends up being, uh, what is it, uh, the, um, the corrupt leader? which is a terrible trait for a leader even if he gets that i work with it that's part of the difficulty of the game that's why i don't uh, crank everything to that main uh, difficulty to extreme because i do other things to make the game more difficult and this is one of them you could have a fantastic game where all the characters are great and then the next game they're all crap and then you got to deal with that right varies the game uh, this is what i'm about here too is uh every game can be different if you look close enough <laughs> right so depending on how you, your leaders roll out and we do have a controlling mind here too and that gives them a uh, calling corruption reduction uh it seems i'm anti-corruption yep yeah you don't like corruption you want everything you want all of the checks and balances to uh check and balance i guess <laughs> okay so we've scanned out our moon uh ooh, oh I'm used to playing at, at trying level, so every time I see these high percentages, I go, oh, wow. But it's kind of just normal percentages for this kind of setup, so I don't want to get all excited about. <laughs> but we got Steel, Aculon, and Kuprika. And this is the speed at which we can pull it out of the ground. So if we have a mining station that has 12 per second, then we get 69% of 12. And that's uh, that just uh, how fast we can pull it out of the ground. And we also have construction research here, which is beautiful. I used to be able to hit this button and then you could, if you ran out of money, you could build uh, build your research station, no problem. That's changed. So we'll uh, see how I'm working with that now. So if you're automated, hit that button right now. If you got if you got construction automated, hit it now. If you're manually controlled, it really doesn't matter. But if we can get that lab initiated before we run out of money, I can actually use the rest of the money after he gets that order. And then the build will just slip us into the negative. So we'll see how that works if we actually run out of money. 
We might not in this one because we're at normal difficulty. So, okay. Anyways, is he done? He is done. So right now I'm going to just take a quick look and see where I'm going to put my spaceport because I kind of want him to scan out this, the asteroids on either side of where I'm going to put this because I want to build some mining stations kind of right away. Uh, no real huge gaps. Uh, there's one there, one here, and one here. I don't like putting in the middle of asteroids because pathing sometimes becomes an issue, but I think I might put it right here. Which means I'm going to want like these three asteroids and these three, this bunch here, all done first. Put my spaceport here, build a, uh, um, a miner here and a miner here. That's three stations right there. So if they come up to my spaceport, so I got three stations with missiles on them to hammer it. So a little bit of forward planning on my part here. So I'm just going to, one at a time, I'm just going to scan these one at a time. We don't have the better scanners in yet anyway, so I guess we will do it one at a time regardless. Uh, let's hope you find a perfect derelict battleship right next door. Yep. <laughs> I, I prefer finding, like, in my home system, like a um, an abandoned base where there's a construction yard on it. Because then I throw all my uh, retired, retired ships over there to disassemble and instead plug them on the main spaceport. <clears throat> but we didn't get anything like that this game, unfortunately. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get when you roll one of these maps. And if you look close enough, every game is different. Absolutely. Okay, 84%. I'm just going to Hawkeye this. I want to slip our spaceport in before this... Uh, Freighter comes uh, comes up next. Because if it slips in the queue like we saw last week, I'll have to delete that ship. So, this is why I don't speed up, because there's some things I need to time out. So there's 92%. I guess we're pretty close here, so I'll just hit pause. And I think I'm going to put it right in here. That's what I was thinking. So this is the only thing you can really place where you want, is anything built at your colony. So you can, with the colony selected, just do a long right click. And there's your menu, and we'll build it right there. Okay, that actually positioned pretty well. There's our there's our um, docking base on both ends here, so these two asteroids shouldn't really be in the problem. Not generally a huge problem, but it annoys me anyways, right? All right, so that's up and running. So that's in next. Spaceport will come up next after the construction ship. So we managed to get that in there before the freighter slipped in. I don't have much use for a freighter, so I'm going to actually put that last. The mining ship will be a bit more useful right away. So we'll go with that next after the spaceport. And we should be able to finish up our uh, construction ship. And we can get building! Only played Distant Worlds Universe. People are uh, able to get multiple traits or just the same ones. Um, <clears throat> how do you mean... Um, People are able to get this multiple trait. <clears throat> they get up to eight or uh, six or eight traits later on in the game, but they start, they can get up to four. So he's got two now. So we can get two more. And then later on in the game, when leaders become better and everything, there's more that can come in here. But you start with the ability of four traits. And this one gives us, <clears throat> oh, there goes our population growth and happiness. I knew it would come along sooner or later. Colony income, construction speed, and facility speed. So we've got a bonus in both on those areas there. So he's still got two more trades that can come. Our general, he lacks discipline. Minus three decreased to all skills. So right off the bat, all skills are going to be minus three. That kind of sucks. But it is what it is. Okay, so... Um, I could probably afford to build a troop, but... I'll wait for just a bit longer. Uh, we have to watch now, after the uh, construction ship is done, which is right here. There he is. So I, uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause for another quick sec. Uh, now, when you have construction ships, you can't place anything where you want. It's up to him where it gets put down. So you can click anywhere you want here, and he'll just pick a spot and do it on his own. So just right-click, build lab. So he's going to pick up some materials and go build a lab. And this way, we're building two stations at the same time. I could have put the lab behind the spaceport here, but we would have had to wait for the spaceport to finish. This way, I get both stations up at the same time. 
So we'll dismiss that. He's going to pick up some stuff from the planet because the uh, spaceport isn't finished yet. So he has to go to the planet to get it. After the spaceport's done, all pickups are done at the spaceport. So this is the one instance where you can actually pick up from the planet. And I'm not sure where he's going to go. It looks like he's just coming over here. That'd be nice. Nice short trip. Yeah, they can get up to four traits. And I believe later on when you get leader increases and that, you can get up to six. Or I think it's just six. I don't know. I haven't spent much time in the end game, so I can't really answer just how that ends up. Uh, <laughs> man, I sure love paperwork. And what's this? The income statements don't want to add up. Better check. Better crack down on that. Yeah, the, the finances are a bit funny here, but uh, they do make sense. There's your colony taxes being taken off the private private income here, and that comes up here, and then we spend it out here. So that's our budget. We can spend up to that, but we're only spending this right now. So basically, that's our budget minus our expenses. Give us that. Okay, so we are building out our spaceport. There's the hull. So the first thing that's going to get done after the hull is those research labs, which means we're going to need funding soon. And I already know we're probably not going to have enough. So we're really going to rely on that a uh, little bit of a boost once you get the work field experiments. So one and a half years, once you build the labs, that's going to drop right down. Yeah. Ah, I do like the ship designs. Reminds me of the Mimbari. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, actually. I never thought of that. Yeah, the co colors and coloring is different. But yeah, the, the long ships rather than the wide ships. Um, okay, so let's pop in here for a sec. You can see that the research lab is indeed being built next. So it's 44% up. And we'll see this number turn red the minute that happens. And how's our explorer doing? He stopped. So we found a bit of steel on that, so I'm just going to buzz around. Once I get over here, I'll just tell him to do the rest of them. I just want these three done first, and I'll move them over here. Uh, lower corruption, lower standards of living, with less population growth and happiness. Sounds like the, sounds like on the RA, IRS. <laughs> the cruisers, yeah, it looked like angelfish. Uh, the Mumbari, yeah. Yeah, Babylon 5 was one of my favorite shows. I think they're rebooting it or something, I heard. I'm like, yeah, I don't know whether I want to see that. I, I, it's too much of a classic to mess with. <laughs> I know they remastered the old one. I haven't seen the remasters. They redid all the... Everything to HD and that. Okay, we found some Mebnar there. So that's another resource. That's not in our moon, so that's good. All right, and we have a red number. There it is. So we need 168 to fund this. What's that, about 20? A little bit more. 24. So there's 24% to fund our science. Come up here, and there it is. Under a year, 260 days. Beautiful. Battle 5 was the best sci-fi. I love that show. I really did. Kind of sucks most of the actors are dead now. Still a few of them around, but yeah, a lot of the main ones died. So we don't see the same characters happening, that's for sure. I don't think they do reboot it. I'm guessing they'll just give it another timeline or something. I don't know. <laughs> How do you tell the same story again? I want to get it on disc. Yeah, well, I, I've i got burned copy, like, but it's the old 4.3. <laughs> like, I downloaded that back in the 90s or, or the 2000s or something. So very low resolution. I think it was all taken with screen cap or something. Yeah, it's very good. But I do have it. It's in the back of a closet somewhere. Yes, I used to be a pirate. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's handier just to pay for stuff now. <laughs> it really is. They aren't capable of the current data re for a redo. The writing quality sucks now. Yeah, you know what? I haven't gotten into a movie in forever. There's nothing that really interests me. 
And if there is something that interests me, it's on some streaming service that I gotta buy a streaming contract for a year to see. Okay, so that's done. I'm just going to issue a, a location command now. So explore location. And he'll finish up the asteroids and go around. He'll even maybe take a pass at the, the homeworld for us too. He'll deal with this is. So that'll be awesome. Ah, spaceport constructed. Take him to it. There it is. Check out that bad boy. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. Sometimes I just find myself sitting here looking at this stuff. Just watching stuff run. <laughs> okay, so the new small, uh, small spaceport is completed. And we can actually build ships now. I completely missed that. But we need to design one first. So, this is what we're going to do with ship designs. We're just going to add new construction ship. And I'm going to auto design and then just quickly edit what I don't want. So that's going to save some time rather than putting all the components on. And, yeah, we're taking stuff off right away. First thing I don't want is some weapons. I don't need weapons on these right now. I don't ever put them on, actually. Might put a missile on later on in the game, but... Uh, and that's a whack of fuel. We don't need all this. Two fuel cells will be fine. So there we go. That's everything we need. That's everything I put on. Don't know what order it's being put on. I would prefer the command center first and the crew systems. Whether the auto designer did that, I don't know. It's a normal game, a normal startup game, so... It's not critical I get that right. So I'm going to call this the pre Oh, no. Yeah, we're still pre-warping. Pre-warp uh, orbital fabricator. And I think we still got to rename our general, don't we? All right. There, there. Nice and quick. So that's what I'm going to do with ships. I'm not going to do the whole build out in its proper order or anything. I might do that in my trying starts, but uh, you don't really need it in your... Uh, in your normal uh, system startups. So let's uh, build one of those. And every time you build something, you gotta adjust your budget. Did you spend money? Oh, we got more labs to fund now. So this station's starting to get its labs online too. So we need more money to fund now. We need 500, ooh. Okay. That's just, what, and we I probably have one more lab to come. Just double check that. Nope, both labs are up. Okay, so that's good. So both all the labs are up. That's the funding we need to, to do all those labs that we have built at the moment. And we have under 52 left for growth. And that's it. So if I was uh, keeping 10% here like the AI likes to do, I wouldn't have this, right? Because it would eat that up. 154 would be sitting up here instead of coming down here to fund a bit of growth. Speaking of growth, 3.8 with hardly any funding. <laughs> that's usually like a one point something, right? You good? Pretty good. Okay, so we got a construction ship going. Uh, is there anything else we need to look at? I don't think so. We'll just get going. Yeah, I don't need to be too nerdy about my timings and everything. Again, this is a, a normal system start. So if it was a trying start, I'd be probably needing to do that. I don't really need to do that kind of stuff. This is just the way I play. Again, I'm just showcasing how I play this. You don't have to play this. You don't have to play it this way. If you put more fuel cells on, do they go further? Yes, but here's the problem. We only have limited supply of fuel at our home world right now. So if we have like 500 going into like say our, our freighter ships and they build 10 of them, that's half our fuel from home world gone. So I trim that rate back for the early game. Um, that way your home world doesn't run right out of fuel right away when you start building freighters and that. Yeah, construction ships and freighters seem to take huge, huge amounts of fuel in the early game, so I trim those right back. Yeah, there's some things the game does, that's kind of why I play manually out of necessity. Because <laughs> I don't like seeing that kind of stuff. That's too much fuel! So I go and manually design the freighters, right? The construction ships. Uh, research station constructed. There we go. There's our first research, research station online. Uh, did we get a scientist yet? Yes, we did. No, that's our overlord. No, no not sign tab. That's sign tab. No, we don't have a scientist yet, so we have nobody to put on there. And we do have to actually just remember to have to. Well, I think a general unaccepted. <laughs> yeah, I'll just call it general unaccepted. How's that? Uh, next. 
Unacceptable views. Ah, might as well put the whole name in. General unacceptable views. That's general views. Sure, that works. Okay, so I'm going to grab our construction ship. And in this case, I got lots of money to build out that uh, uh, research station. It only costs fifty-one forty to do that. I still got lots of money, so I'm going to initiate that lab order. So he's going to come over and build that. Now that he's got that order, I can spend that money. And it's not going to stop him from building that station. It'll slip us into the negative. That's fine. But uh, that's that's okay. All right, what else do we need to do? Eh, he's scanning this stuff out. Perfect. Uh, we do have a construction ship coming, so we're going to need something for him to build, which would be a mining station. Yeah, he's coming over to the spaceport to pick stuff up. So he has to go to the spaceport now to get supplies to build. So he has, gotta, he has to go this way first, and then go that way. Kind of sucks, but... It's the way it happens. Yeah, let's get a, a mining station design quickly before he, before that uh, construction ship's done. And we'll just, uh, uh, that's not a ship. No, we want mining station. And we do have to do this one manually because I do want it in a specific order. Uh, I'm going to get our maintenance savings first. So right away, 22% savings on that while it builds out. And then I'm going to grab a mining engine, put it in the 100 spots, and we place for it. Which is great. We build the hull, we get our maintenance savings, we get to the large mining engine. It's going to start mining and grind to a halt because there's nowhere to put the stuff. So we're going to put a cargo bay on as well. So now it can mine and spit the stuff out in the cargo bay. Uh, we'll need a way to pick it up. So we'll put a docking bay there. And we're going to have to power this. So again, I'm just going through this list, getting all the requirements done. I just happen to know it all up at the top of my head because I've been through this a million times. Okay, energy collector, and we need fuel storage as well. That is a functional station. No weapons, no defense, no nothing, but it will mine stuff, and that's all we need it to do right now. Orbital extractor. Done deal. And again, I go through all that with a fine tooth comb in the other VOD. It's, it's all chaptered if you want to go look at the timestamp. Watch me explain all that. I'm just trying to keep things moving for today, though. All right. So we're just on the cusp of our warp fields. <laughs> Larry's Twitter. I guess I should edit that to say Larry's X. Wow. Hyperdrive technology discovered. So this momentous discovery means that we can quickly travel our own solar system, exploring and expanding. Further advances let us even leave our solar system. Explore the galaxy. All that good stuff. All right. So the only thing I really want right now is a pair of explorers. So that is a state ship. And we are going to add new an exploration ship. Again, I'm just going to auto-generate. I'm going to pull the missile, I'll pull the extra fuel, just to save a bit of fuel at the beginning, and I think everything else is fine. And we got our, our brand new resource scanners now, so we can do uh, asteroids really quick. So, yeah, we can do sweeps across a bunch of them. All right, so this is going to be the Surveyor 1 System Mapper. Actually, tell you what, let's get fancy. He's not a system mapper, he's a system cartographer, if I can spell right. Cartographer, yeah, he's a system cartographer. He's not just a simple mapper. These are not have mappers, they have, they have cartographers. What are you, nuts? <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, let's build a couple of those. Uh, we still have money. I can spend this money now. I got my uh, research uh, build ordered. As long as he doesn't can't, or as long as he doesn't get interrupted, he should build that out without the money being here. He'll just slip us into debt when he actually does do it. So we can use this money to build uh, two cartographers, and we'll put them on manual control as well. And that guy is still working his way around this, the planet. All right, off we go.
Okay, there's our new construction ship. So we're going to grab him, manualize. And what I'm going to do, uh, the pirates tend to come at your spaceport, so I'm going to build a mining station here. And that gives us a catchment. We're going to catch all these asteroids there. Maybe even that one. Depending on where he places it. This is just a preview. He might place it over here, which means that whole ship bubble will shift over a bit once he's done. And then I'm going to build another one there, so that gives us three stations in a row with all the missiles that'll fire on anything coming that. I had one game where the, the, that one uh, research station ended up in here too, so I had like four stations. Uh, these act as, uh, the mining stations I'm about to put down act as mini defense bases too. So sometimes they're coming into your planet and, oh, there's a mining station, they'll get distracted on that a bit. Not always, but... So our money has dropped down to a point where we can't afford to actually build this uh, lab, but since he's already got the order, he's still going to go build it. Actually, you're building this mining station. You're building the lab. He's building the lab. And this distance is too short for them to skip, so I'm not upgrading them to skip drives. That's why I, did, that's why I didn't bother upgrading them. You can upgrade them, but they still won't use the skip drives. This distance isn't long enough. There's a minimum jump distance. So if you see them creeping over the plant, uh, the moon all the time and not skipping and you're scratching your head over it, the distance isn't long enough. Sometimes you start with your moon out here. There are starts where that, that distance is great enough to use a skip drive. And to be honest, the measuring tool in the game that everybody wants, this is the only place I want it for. Really, anything else I really don't care. But I would like to know this distance. Is it skippable? Is it not skippable? You just don't know, right? So, uh, better have a quick look at a couple things here. Temperatures are good. Everything looks fine. Still streaming. All right. Figured I'd look at that instead of at the end of the stream and realize that I haven't been streaming for six hours or something. <laughs> okay, our, our uh, exploration ships are done. So, they're leaving the space yard, and let's see, we have one possibility of fuel, and that's probably where our fuel is going to be. So, we'll come on right over here. Got one guy to go there. And there's a ruin in here, yes. So, we'll get the other guy, the lavish, ron ra lavish rendezvous. To come over and get this. Uh, are they naming these ships after us yet? Not yet. Okay, I don't see any. I don't see any uh, mag bags yet. All right, so we'll start up again, and one of these ships will take our very first skip drive into the future. And they want me to build more of those. But I'm going to find that for now. And as soon as this, uh, there he goes. The lavish rendezvous is engaged in hyperdrive for the very first time. You can speed through hyperspace. Who knows what we'll discover? Excellent. Okay, so um, let's have a look at our budget now that we've got our skip drives. Much bigger. Much bigger. Now we got to adjust some stuff. So 576. That's what, about a third? So we'll go 30%. See how we make out. That levels that up. That gets us actually a bit more money for our colony growth, which is now up to 4.3. Excellent. And we found Osalia at Scamp Prime. Awesome. So that's one of those resources. I'm really hoping the next one will be a luxury because this is painful, 46%. <laughs> Absolutely painful. Okay. Anyways, carry on. Yeah, so I've got to Hawkeye the screen for just a little bit until things settle down a bit. Oops. So I put most everything into science to a degree. Um, just to get through some of this early stuff, I try to maximize my science. But I have to I have to balance it at some point and go uh, half growth, half science or something because uh, we uh, don't want to kill our growth. Our, that's our special feature is growth, so I don't want to pour everything into science and not do that. The boom noise ships makes when the warp is such a good sound effect. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, apparently somebody who did sound uh, design for the Star Wars movies or something was hired to actually do uh, redo some sounds for the game. So, yeah, it's uh, they're definitely professionally uh, produced. So, um, we're still coming over to build our lab. We can still spend this money, no worries. So I'm going to spend it on rushing this research. This is a happiness bonus for a spaceport, which will make our planet happier, which means we will tax better, which means we'll get more money, blah, blah, blah. So we'll get that going as soon as possible. Got to be careful how hard to put my cup down because my mic is on that desk. <clears throat> and you should be just about done here. Yeah, a couple more. Yeah, I actually got a few more. Okay. Oh, is it Star Wars? Did I say Star Trek? Maybe. Old man tied his tongue. <laughs> Ah, mining station. Our first mining station is constructed. Look at that. Uh, the bay's on the other side. But... Okay, so what I'm going to do now is build one on the other side here. Right there. So now that we built that, the previewer, uh, the, what we saw in the preview is going to be different. He shifted over from here all the way over to here. So we click on him again. See that bubble has actually shifted over a bit. And we're actually catching these two as well. So we're catching all of these asteroids. We don't know what's on those two yet until that explorer gets over, but yeah, not a bad placement on that. Not bad at all. I'm I'm more interested in the money from this than the resources. I want the five grand from putting down each one of these stations. That's why I wanted a asteroid start. You can start at a gas giant without asteroids, but it takes a quite a bit longer to actually for me to build out because of the way, a certain way I do things. Can you eventually build defensive bases, uh, defense stations in this? Oh, yeah. And the AI will spam them like no tomorrow. I think they adjusted that a little bit, though. Uh, the, yeah, the AI used to overbuild those like no tomorrow, but I think they have adjusted those back a bit. I don't see a whole lot of, like, end game. Like I said, I'm more uh, early mid-game sort of player. Which is great because Endgame is still going to be fresh for me, even a year and a half in. And the next round of beta testing is going to be Endgame stuff, so I'm going to have to get into it at some point here. Oop, money dropped. Must have bought something. All right, so uh, how's our explorers doing? Still scanning. So they're at the, the two locations, the rune site and the fuel site. We'll see what they dig out. And he still hasn't put our lab down yet. It's still approaching. His choice of where it goes down. That could be all the way over here for all I know. And I've seen that happen. That's yeah, not fun. Yeah, I'd prefer it on this side if you don't mind. Yeah, I find that, uh, like I said, it's probably been fixed at this point, but yeah, I find if the AI is spamming stuff, you just dis delete, uh, obsolete the design or put the design on manual somehow. Then, yeah, I won't build any more of those. All right, off he goes to build another digger. And our private sector should be done by now. It is. Uh, the freighter's sitting around, not doing anything. There's probably not enough uh, stuff to even go get. Yeah, just nothing here. So that's a, that's a very slow mining location. Like I said, I'm more interested in the money than the actual resource from these. And we found a stone pillar. Ooh. Let's go have a look. Noreenly. Noreeny. Hey, it's got silicon. Awesome. I'm only, I'm only surprised when I find silicon because I'm playing trying starts normally and when I find it, I'm excited. Uh, something strange is happening on this world. Inexplicable activity. We should learn more before we travel to the surface and consume everything in sight. Do we investigate these ruins? Yep. Oh! 
unpleasant things. There are things in this world, living things that are not Gazurian. Well, we know what to do with those, don't we? <laughs> They're unfamiliar, but something about them suggests that they might be delicious. Uh, we'll have to report back on that one. Uh, they move to and fro, making noises that resemble language, and yet no one from our world can understand them, so maybe not language at all. The creatures uh, operate strange devices, possibly machines, though we do not recognize them, so they're possibly junk. Uh, before killing and eating these creatures, should we study them, and maybe then there may be machines. Doing so will distract us from other important projects, such as growing stronger, or it might be better to simply devour them. Well, I think we're going to devour them either way. Because before killing and eating these creatures, should we study them? So I'm guessing we're going to study them and eat them anyways. So I guess we might as well study them if we're going to have lunch regardless, right? Sure, study. It is good to learn. Ah, these creatures had intelligence of a sort. They did not seem to like it when we ate them. Imagine. <laughs> we have discovered that we could take over the operation of their machines, which are now our machines. We own them. We have studied their, their research base and learned to operate it. We now know all the things they know. Exploration is almost as enjoyable as consumption. It is, start, it is time to start looking for more aliens. Tasty, tasty aliens. So we have found a technology that has given us a breakthrough in uh, diplomacy for Tekans. I don't think... A, a menu, maybe? Diplomacy? Yeah. No, we could use a menu. A cookbook. That's what we need is a cookbook. <laughs> so we discovered uh, silicon here awesome we have engine research here as well and an unknown bonus and there's the uh, tech that we had achieved from doing this but we also inherited a Tekken research station look at that I'll look at what's on it it's got regular research labs our labs can only do 12 these can do 16 And there's two of them, so with our all research bonus, we're going to get 28.8 out of it instead of 32. So, yeah, this is this complete bonus is really good. Uh, it includes location bonuses, right? So, if there's a location bonus for ship maintenance savings or, or base maintenance savings, you'd see it in this screen if it was at that particular location. All right. Now, there's one problem with this right now that I don't like because I get clicking around and I'm not thinking. So, this button, I want that button gone. So, I don't accidentally upgrade that to from 16 research to 12 on those components. So, I'm going to come in to our designs, state uh, bases. I'm going to come down to all designs. Ah, there it is. Look at that. I'm going to edit that. I'm going to come up to this design upgrades to none. Save that. Unselect, reselect, that button is now gone. So now if I'm clicking through in a flurry, just upgrading stuff, and I don't want to upgrade this, there's no option here for me to do it. If I can click on that. There's still the option to right-click or long right-click to retrofit up to what we have. So we still have the option to retrofit. We've just disabled that button, basically. Which is fine by me, because I get click-happy and not thinking. So we got more research. You know what that means? More funding. We need 1152. Uh, what is that, about a 75%? That was pretty close, guess. There we go. So we need more funding for those new two, two new labs that we got. And research speed is a lot quicker. Yeah. Free lab! And lunch! We had lunch at the same time. That's awesome. <laughs> How to serve Tekans, yes. <laughs> Yeah, they were delicious, actually. Uh, we should find more. Yeah, there, I started a game, and there's there's two Tekken Indies and a Tekken Empire right beside me. It was like, ooh, buffet's open. <laughs> I did. I chowed down on all of them. Yeah, there wasn't a Tekken left when I was done. Okay, so we found some fuel. I suspected it would be there because it's the only gas giant we have. That's not a gas giant. Am I spun around again? Yes, that's a gas giant. So, ooh, look at that, 100%. Again, I'm used to trying starts. So you never see 100% on a trying start. So, normal starts, you'll see quite a few high percentages. And we got some Krypton and Argon there. So, we got all three gases here. There's one more gas that we need, but there's three of them. 
Yeah, there's Tiderius as well. Okay, so are you finished? You are finished. So I'm just going to get him to do that moon right behind him. That's a carbonaceous moon, so carbonate. Possibly. Possibly. Carry on. Now, what's the other one doing? He's still, uh, still scanning away. Gotta want to go to a buffet now. <laughs> the one near me, I used to get got new owners and the quality went way down. Yeah. Now, there's a place in town I used to like, but, uh, then new owners. Yeah, it's always the new owners, right? I went in just as they opened one day to, uh, to get, uh, I don't need one of those, to get, uh, like a dinner for one or something, right? And I went in just as they opened. I got home and it was like yesterday's leftovers. You could tell they just reheated a bunch of stuff from their buffet, right? That was the last time I was there. Yeah. Okay, so that is done. Okay, so he's finished scanning all these asteroids. Perfect. I'm going to get him to wander over here for a retrofit, and then we'll send him out and to look at some more planets in our system. So what did we get here? We got another seven and two and three. It's actually not a bad location. So if you want to know exactly what you're getting here, you can sit and add all these off. Or you can just come into your resource screen and go to mining locations. That is the VK420 mining station, and it has 8% uh, Magnar and 20% steel. Uh, the other one we put down, it's this one here, I guess. Yeah, that's not so great at 2% and 3%. Uh, I think it's just counting the one we built on, so the mining engine probably isn't done yet. That's probably what it is. Yeah, mining engine isn't done yet, so... Once it's done, it'll, tr it'll show the proper numbers. So you can go in there and have a look to see exactly what you're getting here. Or sit and add all these up. Same number. Same number. Better check my stream time. Has it really been an hour and a half? My God. This game is dangerous. It's time manipulation software. It really is. Well, I'm sitting here going, hmm, I'm going to take a break soon. And I realize it's an hour and a half. So, well, maybe we should go do that. We're kind of in the middle of a couple things here. Um, I guess I can try building a troop here. Ah, too late. But we can maybe get Swarm Lord. That'll cancel that out. And I can't afford it. So, that's that. <laughs> Yeah, I think we'll take a break because, uh, well, old man and coffee made me take a break. So I'm just going to pause the game here and we'll come over and we'll set up my break opening screen here. All right. Yeah, uh, just a couple minutes. So it won't be very long. And we'll be all right back.
All right, I'm back. What do you think of that cruiser? Just throw it that way. <laughs> That's a pirate cruiser. A bunch of my uh, swarm coming up to kick it. Yep, pretty cool. All right, we're back. Uh, spies seem to spend a lot of time in enemy jails. Yeah, wait till we get a couple. <laughs> I had great fun with my viewers uh, assigning them as spies and then uh, trying to keep them alive. <laughs> uh, do we have spies yet? I don't think I saw one. No, we don't. What do we have for characters? Just the two, eh? Yeah, unacceptable. Very unacceptable. Being a poor recruiter. So we named you right. <laughs> That's my unacceptable view, being a poor recruiter. That's mine's 13, so I'm hoping I get Swarm Lord when we do this, but I don't have money right now. So as soon as we get a bit of money, I should go down a troop. Welcome back. Well, thank you. Bit of a trip, sure. <laughs> All right, so what are we up to? Uh, still exploring. You're retrofitting. In you go. And we're just about to finish our recreation center. And the freighter's still sitting doing nothing. That tells me I don't need any freighters yet. Now the miner's just at the moon, mining the moon. He'll be fine. And there's a recreation center. And I'll pause right there. And we're gonna zoom down to our spaceport because we are going to upgrade that to have one of those recreation centers. Uh, state bases, let's just go back to active buildables. And we'll grab our orbital assembly. We'll hit an upgrade. And right there is our recreation center. Also gives us 5% maintenance savings. So we're already at 31. Wow. Oh, ah! Uh, hang on. Let me do that again. <laughs> I misclicked. So upgrade again. Grab a recreation. Put it here. Thank you. Okay, so uh doesn't blow out any power so we're good we can just save and go and we'll grab our spaceport and we'll hit upgrade that slips right into our planet queue perfect and one thing i like to watch every game uh this little curiosity thing i have is this varies greatly from game to game and i'm always curious on just what we get for doing this uh upgrade but basically what's that what the upgrade is going to do is get plus three happiness to this list which is going to allow us to tax more. So I'd like to see just how much more our taxes will be when we uh, actually uh, build out that uh, component. So we'll see one more entry come in at uh, for recreation centers. And we're at 2820 right now. 2822. Boom. 2822 to 3332. 500 credits. And that's sitting right here. So now we got to adjust these things down a bit more. We put a bit more money on growth now, which is awesome. Okay, can we go one more? Sure. All right. So that's the first recreation center. Now we got a medical system, which is going to do the same thing again. So depending on your startup and your financial situation and your difficulty level and everything, this can be anywhere from like a couple hundred to a couple thousand just by putting those two components on your, on your uh, spaceport. Very important early upgrade, in my opinion. Oh, Dire Moon, yeah. I actually think there's a clip on my Discord of uh, of when I blew up that planet you and Robert were on with the Planet Destroyer. <laughs> I think that's on my uh, Discord and clips. Or I'm not even sure where that is, but it is on the Discord somewhere. And we found Carbonite. Show me that. Oh, show me that. If I can move my mouse too quick. All right, there it is. And I did suspect to be carbon. Oh, that's a great location. There's 68% emerald crystal, 22% carbonite, and 75% polymer. I like it. And you are actually done scanning. So this is these are the moons out by that gas giant where our fuel is. So I'm just going to continue on over here. Uh, this retrofit should be done. Yeah, leave construction yard. I'm going to get him to go, I guess, into the core. It's a volcanic planet. We'll get him to go do that. And we'll continue on. So I don't have enough money to rush that tech, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to wait for it. But even still, it's less than a year. We're doing actually pretty good uh, as far as uh, science goes. A little underfunded. Oop, so we are. Oh. 
What on earth did we have? 1500. Wow, where'd that come from? That's a huge amount of money. What's going on here? I, I, again, it's probably just the normal level. I'm not used to playing it at normal, so it looks like big numbers. There's a spy. And a scientist. So we've got two characters. Great back to back. Okay, so we have a scientist, which we are going to transfer right out to our our um, uh, um, research station. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> and I see Casper's name. So Casper seemed to be our scientist. And you are going to go to our... Oh, I didn't rename my stations. Uh, that's kind of important, so I know where you're putting you guys. So let's just go do that quickly. I like to rename my stations so I know where they are. So this is the research station at Magbag Prime. So we are going to call this Magbag Prime oops, Construction Labs. And if you didn't catch last week, then uh, I generally name these labs. Oh, you're not in the build yet. Oh, yeah, that, that still has to go down. Oh, no, that's mining. Where the hell did my... Oh, way over here. <laughs> I was wondering where my station was. There it is. So this one I'm going to call the Magbag Moon, just to show that it's that their moon. And this will be con another construction one, really. We got two construction lab bonuses, or two construction lab uh, res uh, sites. That's interesting. So, and we also have a new spy, new spy guy. Who wants to be a spy? Ah, spy diamond. Why not? You got experience. <laughs> There we go. You're safe for the moment on counter intel, buddy. We are. So we got a scientist and a spy. Perfect. <laughs> if it runs out of fuel, it will travel at sublight speed. Yeah. It'll take forever until you make your refueling trip. Yeah, uh, basically what happens is uh, you have no more fuel to power your reactors. You're basically flying with your uh, energy collectors. It's Kind of what's happening. Still need money. And what's going on with the construction? That's probably done. Yes, it is. Okay, what did we catch here? Okay, cut all those. So we are going to get you to build this cluster here, maybe. And depending on where he puts that, we may miss one side or the other. Hopefully he puts it this way. We'll see what happens when that time comes. Diamond, me and my big mouth. <laughs> That's okay. I actually have pretty good luck with, with spies these days. Sort of. <laughs> Depends on who I'm playing. Uh, I think these guys are pretty good at spying, actually. If I'm not mistaken. 20% uh, research and construction. Oh, it's this place. Oh, we didn't rename this station. This is that Tekken station. Oh, well. Oh, that's, uh, and we got, what do we have here? Construction and engine research. All right. So this is going to be the engine construction labs. We got a lot of construction research. Actually, this is a Tekken station, isn't it? This is going to be the mag bag. Smelly engine construction labs. I'll hyphenate that. Yeah, because, you know, once you get the tea and smell into stuff, you just can't get it out, no matter how much you scrub. So this is going to stink forever. So our scientists better not get any bad traits or you're going right there. <laughs> you have to live with the tea and smell. Oh, and our lab is done at the moon. Uh, do we need any more funding for that? Probably. That's why we're shooting up, because that lab was getting done. Plus, we got that Tekken lab, too, so that's a lot of research suddenly, isn't it? 88. That's actually pretty good for the beginning, isn't it? I got three stations, so I'm guessing that's probably pretty good.
Uh, Casper says, I usually don't bother with espionage. It's just so pointless. I get a lot of tech. I get a ton of tech. And I'm going to be looking for Kuminos big time here. Because I, I want their reactors. I want their reactors. I want the Hakonish fuel cells. Like all those specialized things you can steal and use. But the reactor is the one I really want for these guys. Because our, our escorts are actually pretty tiny. Uh, there's only in like uh, eight general slots where most races get nine, ten, or eleven. So the smallest, uh, I think, Camino are eight as well. So those are the two smallest uh, escorts in the game. So if we can remove a reactor to make space for, say, a boarding pod, we should probably try and do that. And we'll pop that down a notch and see how things are going. Oh, did I put you back to work? I didn't. Uh, I'm just going to get him to build the miner at the moon here, since he's sitting right here. Alright, so you are finished that. You finished digging out that construction research, so what else do we have in here? This location here, I guess. Yeah, no pirates to worry about here. Which is good. Come on, somebody put down a station. I need money. Okay, so that had Tiderius on it. It's at 28%. That's a construction resource. So we'll come over and grab this one. If that's going to be colonizable. Maybe. I think this one is too. Oh, hell yeah! 35! Oh, yeah! Forgot about that. Yeah, you can colonize this too. That's a really good planet. Sure is! Name the station something like Gizu Buffet and Takeout. <laughs> mm. Okay, so finances. I, I do tend to Hawkeye this just a little bit at this point. Um, I'm trying to just get through the pre-warp, and then I'm going to level this off so that I give uh, a little bit more to the growth as well. We're doing pretty good at 3.4, but we are Gazarians. Get me some troop money. And we found Luxury. Awesome. Drabakian Granite gives us 5% colony development and 1% colony income. Yes, okay, so we'll have to get on that as soon as we can. Is that the only luxury we found already? Wow, that is our only luxury. Ooh, hang on. I think that is our only luxury. Oh, that's painful. I don't even see it here. Uh, are we just blind? Probably. Oh, there it is. Yeah, we'll have to get that home as soon as possible. That will help out our development. That's still sitting at 47. It was 46. The population has nudged it up a notch. And there's no more unknown items here, so there's no luxuries at home. So, wow, is that the only luxury we're going to get? Um, there might be some stuff here, too. Yeah, we're going to have to, like, get out of here and find some luxuries in a hurry. Oh, somebody put down a station so I can get some money. So every time I put down a mining station, I get paid for that by five grand. Uh, mining or the research station actually cost us the state five grand, but we get money for building these areas. There it is. Okay, so grab our unacceptable general here <laughs> and see if we can spawn uh, swarm lord. Sometimes you do that and it cancels out the poor recruiter. We'll still be at minus three. Uh, no, but he did get a maintenance savings, so 1% on maintenance. I guess that'll work for now. Yeah, he'll he'll probably get other traits that'll be useful. He's just not very good at recruiting right now. And we should probably push that out. Rec uh, medical centers, there we go. We'll get that as soon as we can. And while we're in here and have a little bit of money, I'm going to queue up our next level of warp field as well. And I might even throw the other research labs in there as well while we have a bit of money. Now, keep in mind, I see a lot of people doing this, and it's not so big deal if you're playing on the normal level like this, but if you're playing on trying or harsh start, 
do not fill your queue up with a whole bunch of research just because I got a little bit of money right now because each of these researches costs the resources too. So if you started a game with only 200 silicon, say there's only 200 silicon on the ground, you don't have a source of it. Four of these researches will murder your supply of silicon and you're done. You can't build anything. So I try not to queue too far ahead once I get into this level. This generally just costs you credits. That's it. There's no resource involved at level zero. But level one, you do have resource costs, 50, 50, and 50. Steel, polymer, and silicon. That one, same thing, right? So you can bankrupt your uh, your um, the minerals just by queuing a whole bunch of stuff up at once. So never a good idea, especially in the early game, if you're on a trying start to actually do that. So keep that in mind. Oh, we're dropping. I, I built something, didn't I? Yep. Every time you build something, you got to adjust this. So every time I build something, I'm actually taking funding from down here, which is a bit painful, but got to do what you got to do, I guess. All right. Uh, exploration. Okay, that's finished. Is there anything left to do? Yeah, this is a pretty lean system, actually. Here, you can come over and do this moon, I guess. Yeah, we're done already. That's actually a pretty lean. Yeah, pretty lean system. I don't even have any pirate magnets here. Hmm. I have to build a location here or something. Oh man, they're gonna come at this. This has deflectors on it. The station will get half destroyed probably. Uh, anyways, uh, there's our medical centers. Okay, so basic medical centers are done. Same deal as the recreation. We're going to come in. We're going to grab our orbital research, or orbital assembly, sorry. And we're going to upgrade that. And we're going to put a medical center on it this time. That's going to do the same effect as the recreation center. Fortunately, this time we've blown out our static collection power by two. So we'll need another energy collector. All right. That fixes that, and we can save and go. And once again, we will hit our retrofit button. We will select our planet. It went straight into the queue. Beautiful. And 3458 is our number right now. So we're going to look for that medical entry and then we'll see what we jump to. We got 500 in the last one. All right, 3459. So almost 300 more. So between the eight, the two upgrades is almost 800 in cash flow. Once again, now I can throw a bit more. Uh, hang on. Ah, okay. Uh, it's flipping tax rates now to satisfy uh, happiness levels. So it's going between, uh, I guess, 17 and 18 right now. So right now it looks like we're underfunded. I'm going to pop that up to make sure we're funded. So I'll make sure I catch the low end, make sure that stays white, and then we'll carry on. Now it's going to pop back up. So it's going from 17 to 18% on the taxing just to satisfy the happiness. This is where manual tax control can be tricky because you have to adjust for that. So doing that manually is a big pain. Oh, found another luxury. Excellent. Yeah, so anyways, uh, we'll let that go. And that's going to just keep flipping up and down. So we're satisfied regardless of what level that's at. So, um, Like I said, pre-warp, I kind of concentrate on research a little bit. And then I'll level off and uh, we'll do a bit of uh, colony growth at the same time. I'll maybe do a 50-50 split or something on it. Because growth is just as important as research in this uh, with the Gazardians. So, all right, carry on. On to armor plating, and these guys are done. Uh, this one's done. Okay, well, there's nothing left to do. Uh, can you do the star? Might as well do the star. Sometimes there's research bonuses at stars. Don't ignore the stars. And lately, I noticed there's an increased amount of uh, research locations on asteroids. I've been finding quite a few just on the last couple patches. So I think that's been adjusted a bit. I never used to find research locations on asteroids. So if you're ignoring asteroids in the beginning game, it might be a good idea not to. And that's done. And we got somebody else doing the moon. Yep, so we got Casing Crystal here and uh, Zacantar, 9% colony development. Nice. I think that's the highest in the game, other than the super luxuries. 
which is awesome. Well, that makes up for the lack of luxuries anyway, so that's 9%. Well, you might as well come over to Homeworld and just wait for retrofit and uh, get free warps. Yeah, I might have to do a little bit of uh, times twoing or something here. Yeah, we're going to have to wait for the warp drives for a bit. So I might have to do some uh, some time enhancements here. I have to hit the 4x. Oh no, that's completely against my way of playing. But just to keep things moving. Oh, rivalries. Okay, here's there's the first one. And this is a unique thing for the Gazurians. We have a rivalry function now. So a power struggle has occurred between two, two of our characters, Casper Minning and Diamond. You guys. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> the rivalry is spun out of control and we are now forced to choose between the two. We must select a winner for the power struggle. The winner will gain an extra skill and a positive trait. The loser will be dismissed. Our empire will also suffer a period of unhappiness as the supporters or supporters uh, the loser supporters adjust to the new situation. Yeah, so uh, we need to have a look here. Uh, we have Spy Diamond, who has no traits yet. We don't know anything about him, and we have Spy uh, Scientist Caspar. I'm sorry, Diamond. I have to go with a scientist. I I can name a sibling. The next spy is a sibling, a Diamond Junior or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to pick the scientist. I I can't go with a scientist. He stole my sweet roll. Promote him. <laughs> Eat the spy. <laughs> yeah, the the spy does die. Uh, you can only just imagine what happens to the body afterwards, right? Yeah. Diamond in the lunch. <laughs> so we're going to pick uh, pick our scientist. I, I can't get rid of our scientist. we got to keep him. Um, just for gameplay purposes. <laughs> we'll get another spy. No worries. So, scientist, Caspar wins the battle. And he's sober. Plus five to all research. Not bad. That gets us from 15 down to minus 10. Yep. But we're spyless again. You know, I like to have my spies around for a bit. Yeah, our spy, Diamond, has died at Scamp Prime. Died. <laughs> it wasn't launch, he just died. <laughs> mm. All right, so there it is, rivalries. Empire happiness minus five for a year. So that's affected, okay, that's affected a couple things. Number one, the amount we can tax, which means our money just dropped down. So I got to readjust our taxes to cover our science again. Yeah, just about all of it now. So that's going to have to be like that for a year. So that kills our growth again. Yeah, 3.2 is actually still pretty good. At least it's not one point something like normal, so we're still actually doing all right, but not as good as a Gazarian can do. That's yeah, you know, we're not up to potential. We need to be at potential. Uh, private sector is looking pretty strong. Twenty six, uh, yeah, that's looking all right. Yeah, they're usually in the teens. Yeah, we're doing all right, I think. For normal, normal uh, starting system again. I'm not used to playing at this, so. Seeing bigger numbers than I'm used to. Okay, so you built that one. Let's get you to build this one. And we're getting 5,000 every time we put one of these mines down, so probably get ooh, nothing there. That might be our last one. Oh, that's a research station, so we could probably put one more in here. So one more five grand. Uh, at this point, I might just wait for the armor anyways. Uh, we can build it a private sector. We don't have any private sector yet. Uh, is that Freighter doing? Yeah, Freighter's still sitting around doing nothing. So that's not. Oh, he's not doing nothing. Okay, this is something I want to point out too. See this uh, mining stage or mining ship here? He doesn't have a skip drive. He's off probably to mine fuel. I'm assuming. Yeah, so he's coming over to mine fuel. He doesn't have a skip drive, so he's going to impulse all the way over there. Uh, I've seen people just outright 
scuttle the ship at this point. Yep, you're not getting, you're not going to make it, so scuttle it. Don't scuttle it. Uh, we'll get a new design going, and the minute this research finishes, he's going to reassess everything. He sees the new design, he's going to turn around and go back for retrofit. There's no need to scuttle these. And I see people complaining about this all the time, and no, just give it a little time. If, if there's a better design for him to go to, as soon as the next research is done, he'll realize, hey, there's a better research, or better design, and he'll turn around and go for retrofit. And in fact, we will actually make sure that happens this time. I'm going to just do the, um, I'll just do the mining ship for now. So there's our mining ship, and I'm just going to auto design that. And that looks pretty good, except I don't want the missile, and I don't want the second cargo bay either. I want one cargo bay so he loads up quick and returns more frequent, more frequent trips rather than uh, less frequent but more stuff more frequent with less stuff so you get the stuff home faster so I'm just going to pull one of those off and that's probably a pretty good design rate right as it is good enough so you are going to be the DIG 1000 remote extractor and then we'll see that happen so as long as there's a design for him to use I'm not going to do the freighter right now but uh, the AI will actually build a few of those I'm going to have to retrofit it real soon to put some defense on it anyway so it's kind of why I wait a bit. You are a cruel taskmaster. You could set it to manual and save him all this time traveling. Um, this guy? I can't do anything with him, can I? Uh, if you had a character with, uh, win several rivalries, they would get insanely good. Um... I'm not sure I've seen that actually happen. But that's a good thought. I haven't seen if that actually stacks or not. I don't think. But that's a good thought. Okay, so the private sector is building out a ship. We got a bit of money for that. I don't wait till the ar uh, at least the armor's done, then I'll build out the craters and everything. But uh, I just want to show that this is what's going to happen once we get this tech completed. Uh, you're at home, you're exploring. We don't need any more cartographers, thank you. Our upscale cartographers. We don't have mappers. You're too arrogant for mappers. We have cartographers. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's a private sector ship. I can't control it. Unless I was a Tekken, I could control it. But Or a mercantile guild, which is Hakanish as well. But yeah, as soon as that uh, armor is done, which we can probably rush. Okay, we'll crash program that. As soon as that's done, he's going to turn around. But yeah, I kind of like to have defenses on them first, but just because he's heading out, I'm going to make sure there's a better design for him to go to. Yeah, what are you doing? Oh, you're still building the moon. Okay, yeah, you travel slow, don't you? 42! Getting your life. Yeah, I'm not sure, but if one character can get sub several rivalries. And like I said, I don't think I've witnessed that happen yet. Possible. Zerian Explorers should really be called poachers or something. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so you're at home, you're still scanning, uh, it's still going. Um, I'm going to just upgrade our construction ship designs. They don't have pre or any warp drives on them yet, so we'll just get that done here quickly. Actually, we'll wait till we get armor. Armor's almost done, so put armor on at the same time. More coffee! I'm planning at least four hours today. <laughs> I don't have a real set time that I'm going to quit. This might get dangerous again. I swear to God, this is time manipulation software. It's not a game at all. Because here we are, more than two hours, and it doesn't feel like it. This game is stealing way too much of my life. What did I, what did I put in the review? I reviewed the, the DLC. I said, this thing is consuming more of my life than a, T uh, than a Gazarian at a Tekken buffet or something. Like, something that. 
Okay, so we got our armor. Uh, let's go have a look here. Yep, there he goes. So he's turning around going back. So no need to scuttle these if you see them wandering off. Just wait till the next tech is done. He'll turn around and go back and retrofit. They don't get very far on those uh, impulse drives, so they should still be fairly close to home. Yeah. I might wait for shielding. Ah, uh, no. No, it's not. It's going to wait for shielding to do the rest of our uh, private sector. Did I not rename that? I don't think I did. I didn't do it, did I? I thought I did that. Did I not rename it? No. I think it came in to do it and then didn't do it. That's probably what happened. <laughs> uh, so we must have a hyperdrive. So uh, yeah, we want to upgrade these so that they can actually uh, skip around and do stuff. And this will now be a build one system fabricator with a skip drive. Yes, it came in to do it and then got distracted on something. So uh, we need another reactor for this. Okay, power's good, power's good, everything looks good. Just our four recommendations, good enough. And then as soon as they're kind of done their building, we'll get them to retrofit and then we can go elsewhere and build stuff. We got shielding coming now. So now we got armor, we should actually look at putting some of those on our bases. Um, if all characters have an equal chance to do a rivalry with each other, you can see how the chance of characters getting into two rivals over life, their lifespan is. Yeah. That would be interesting. Um, we'll see how that happens. And our moon mine went down. Excellent. So I think we got one more station to build. In. Oh, that's 84. We'll build right on that one. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And we're on to shielding now, which we should probably push. Here, we'll give that a quick push. And do I have enough to actually queue up our research? Yes. So I'm going to get that in the queue now. And then I'm going to go check the stuff on the ground just to see how we're doing for resources. Fuel's dropping, and we got a good supply of pretty much everything else. So It's a normal uh, starting system, so we, we should be fine. I don't think I have to Hawkeye that too much. Uh, I do need a couple more troops on the ground before pirates start showing up. Speaking of pirates, I've been delaying them. I don't know if anybody caught last stream and what, what, how that works, but uh, basically, if you don't build any miners or anything outside your home orbit, there's no pirate trigger. It's when you start building out your fuel and any stations that come out here. Generally, when the mining station fires up, that's when the alert goes out to the pirates. So if they're sitting here, they're just kind of waiting for that to happen, and they'll come in and start banging stuff around. Uh, one indicator, if we don't see them right away, that means there could possibly be another empire close by, and if they spawn here and they triggered first, they're going to go this way and hassle them for a minute. So if they don't show up for a little bit, it means there's other empires probably close to us. So. At least that's in, in theory, anyway. That seems to have worked out any time I've come across that. Okay, so you are finished the moon. I think I'll just hit you with a retrofit order. And he's just heading out to build that one now. So we got, there's nothing on these two. So we'll definitely build out that big one and that'll kind of be it for stations around our home world. And that'll be it. Should I be seeing pirates soonish, if not already? Yeah, I just went through that. Yeah, as long as you don't build anything outside your home orbit, there's the pirates don't trigger. Now, there's nothing saying that they don't just randomly wander through your system and find you. They, that could happen. Like if they spawn up here and they're heading over here for something and this is a jump point or they're passing through, they'll notice you. But for the most part, it's the mining state. The first mining station that goes up, that's your come and get me flag. And I usually start with some asteroids or some meaningless location I can put my first couple stations on, but I don't have that this time. We might be in a bit of trouble on that score. Because I, yeah, I don't want, like, what's going to happen is the pirates are going to congregate in one of the first two stations built, or the first part anyways. And I call that my pirate magnet. But in this case, all these locations are super important. So this is going to be a bit of a tricky build out, I think. Uh, we might get uh, blocked on some uh, some items here. 
we'll see how it works out. We don't know because it's a random brand new game and we don't know how things work out. We could completely get murdered by pirates, for all I know. Right. I can usually handle them, but there's been a couple instances. Oh, too many. <laughs> uh, we don't need any more cartographers. Thank you very much. And you guys are still scanning away. Are you both scanning the moon? Okay. Yeah, you can double time your your escorts too, or your explorers as well. They're both scanning this right now. So what'll happen is if say they're off, they're offset by thirty seconds or something. Uh, as soon as one scan completes, it goes up a level. So 30 seconds later, the other guy finished his scans, it goes up another level. So you can have more than one explorer on a single body, and it'll get done quicker. I generally like, I generally like to spread my explorers around. I'd rather not clutter them up, but or cluster them up. But yeah, you can totally put more than one explorer on, on, a, on a moon and dig it out quicker. And we have unknown items. Uh, anything else unknown here? Nothing there. Unknown items on that moon that we just saw. Okay. I just want to see if there's anything else that needs to be dug out a bit. Nope. We know everything except for that one moon. So. I might put my first two miners over here. I think that'll be our part, pirate magnet. Okay, we got re <clears throat> reflectors. Deflectors. And there's our unexploited stuff there. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to move all these guys home. There's actually a moon or a, 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 a facility or a, a rune there. Not retire, move. I did say move, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a rune there. Okay, that'll definitely be one of the first two. Uh, th those two will be our first two miners, mining stations to go down. And I generally wait until I'm within about a year of the warp drives being finished. Because chances are I'm going to have to pay one of them. Uh, some protection money. Which is going to murder our numbers down here. So I kind of like to get most of the warp drive reserves before I pirate to, uh, trigger the pirates to come in and take all my cash flow. But we got a little bit of time to wait here, I think. Yeah, I don't have nearly enough money, but... We still got to build a private sector. That's where we're going to get our money now. So I'm going to go to civilian ships and I'm going to upgrade this guy to have a bit of armor. I think I'll put it actually deflector on them. I usually, I usually design these and put them out while I have armor and not deflectors. But since we got the deflectors at this point, we must all use those. So put a deflector on and we got enough power and that looks fine. I'm not going to worry about the fuel ranges at this point. Uh, we'll call that a V2. That's fine. Save that. And then we'll add a new freighter finally. And we'll auto generate that. And this is what I'm talking about with the fuel. There's like five of them on here. Build 10 of these ships, that's 5,000 uh, fuel gone. They build 10 right away. So there's 5,000 fuel gone. They'll build up to 20. There's 10,000 fuel gone. That's your fuel supply gone. That is why I trim this right back to two. Okay, I build 10 now, it's only 2,000 fuel. And they generally build between 10 and 20 in the early games, so, you know, 2 to 4,000 fuel rather than 10,000 fuel. I'll take it. So we trim those off, we take the missile off, and I think everything else should be okay. We got one cargo bay, though. Uh, on the freighter, I think I'll put another cargo bay just so they can pick up more stuff when they do make the trips. You can get away with one, it's fine. But uh, we'll also put a second one on, we got room for it. Again, not going to worry about fuel range, but we will name that the cargo 1000 smaller hauler. Was it smaller? It's going to be a hauler. That's why. Oh, man, I didn't do my usual pick, pick for later. And we have more money again. What is that? What do we do? What did we build that gave us more money? Oh, the happiness thing went away. Ah, we, we got 10 happiness back. That's what's going on. So funding is a little better now that that, um, that rivalry thing's gone. And we're flipping taxes again. 
17 and 18 probably. Yep. So we'll just satisfy the lower end, which is pretty much there. That's fine. Once I get through warp drives, I'm going to kind of go 50-50 on the science and the growth. Both kind of work. Both are important, so... I've done games where I put everything into research for the first part of the game, and the next thing you know, I'm actually less population than anybody else, and that's not good for a Gazarian. <laughs> okay, we got 10,000. Uh, let's see what we're building here. Yep, got one more. So they're going to build out a few more of those ships, which will probably give us enough money to rush our, uh, our crash program, our, our warp drives. Whenever they get around it, and as you can see, a lot of them going for fuel. They're going to go start mining fuel. And the freighters are still just sitting. Yeah, there's probably no demand for steel or mednar or anything yet. Yeah, we still got lots. I'm surprised you're not going for mednar, though. Oh, they might fire up in a minute and go get that. Should be fine. And budget again. All right. Let's see our leader made out. He should have all his traits by now. Yes, he does. Controlling mine, labor-oriented, engineer, and measured. So corruption induction, bunch of stuff there. Engineer, plus five all research. We saw that already. Plus 10 construction speed. And then measured, minus five happiness. There it goes. So we've got all four traits on this. Let's see what our final bonuses on that stuff came out to. Calling happiness minus five and population growth is actually leveled off. And we're up five points on the old research. Excellent. Awesome. And how's our construction ships doing? You're retrofitting. You need to go retrofit too. I'm going to bring, make sure he goes to the uh, spaceport to do it though. Actually, let's build this first. Get that done. That'll be five, five more grand for us. And private sector is still building. Yep. Excellent. There's a retrofit. So that one that would came out at the beginning of the game, he's off for retrofit. All right. Ooh, the 22 here, too. Sad. We got two colonizables in our home world. Are you kidding me? I'll take it. Ooh, we're going to grow fast. Uh, that one's a bit small, though. 3336. It's only 22% suitability. Yeah, it's not great. How big is this one? Uh, a little on the small side too, but it's probably going to be all right. 35 development plus we can increase our uh, suitability. We can increase that too. It'll be all right. Oh, and we can rush our work field finally. There we go. So private sector comes through again with some funding. And it's going to cost us 19 over 21,000. More than happy to pay it. There you go. We get that in about a year. Perfect. So you are upgraded. I think there's no reason to delay this any longer. It's, uh, yeah, I need to wait till about a year. They're going to kill my funding when they come in, though. So it might delay our uh, warp drives just a bit when the funding goes away, if I have to pay one. I'm not saying I'm going to pay the first one or anything either. So there is that. I'm constantly looking over at the stream time now. I don't want to be caught off guard and go eight hours. <laughs> I want to know where I'm at. All right, two and a half hours. Okay. Like I said, I'll go at least four hours. Probably longer. Don't know whether it'll be nine again, though. <laughs> but you never know. This game sucks me right in. All right, so all, all of the explorers are sitting around our, our um, spaceport right, waiting for retrofits to the better warp stable fields or stable warp fields when we get there. And I'm not going to build any more of those right now. Thank you. I still need to go through. Uh, we got a bit of time, so let's get this done. I meant to do this earlier, and I never did. We need to get some arm armor and armaments on our station. 
So let's upgrade this. Uh, if you didn't catch last stream, I only run with armor in the early game because deflectors actually make uh, cause more damage than they stop. So I'm going to put a short range sensor. Because what happens is most, most pirates, not all, but most have rail guns, which are shield skipping weapons. So they're trying to take the shields down to, bo to a board. So they have to bring the shields down to a certain level. Meanwhile, the rail guns are skipped partially by bypassing the shields and getting our armor and making and doing damage to our station. So by leaving the uh, deflectors off, we basically left the front door open. Come on in, grab what you want. We're good with it. However, good luck getting out. And I'll show you how we're going to work that in just a sec. Let's get their weapon up and running here first. I'm going to put a laser in the uh, point defense slot, and then we're going to put missiles everywhere else. So one there, one there. You can either put them over here, or you can come over here and put them here. So we've got our missiles, and now we're going to put what I call anti-raiding. And this is boarding defense, and you get that with uh, crew systems. And if we put a bunch of this on, we'll see that number rise. Six, so almost uh, 650, almost. So what this does is, uh, yeah, the pirates will get on because we have no shields. They'll just throw the pods on because they don't have to take any shields out. So we left the front door open. They're going to come in. They're going to grab a bunch of stuff, and they're going to try to get out. But our crew says, our, all the crew that we have on board this, take them out before they leave with anything. So they come in, they take stuff, and they get murdered on the way out. They generally don't get any loot. Not 100%, but close enough for me. Uh, if they bring enough ships, they'll definitely get stuff, but uh, we'll see how that works in a sec. So we need more power. Oh, why don't I need more power for your short-range sensor? Oh, I'll probably need another. Okay, hang on. Uh, yeah, something's just different here for some reason. I'm forgetting something. I usually need an energy collector at this point. Oh, I know what I forgot. Do I even have one? Oh, I must. I screwed it up. This design didn't I? Click somewhere. I took the. I took the mining engine off, didn't I? I must have clicked the crew system wrong. So what are we building here? Hang on. A little extractor. Oh, scroll up a little bit, you dumbass. <laughs> I'm like, where's the mining engine? I can't see the mining engine. Where's the mining engine? I, there's no mining engine on this. Where is it? <laughs> oh. Okay, well, that's there. I'm still puzzling over the energy collection. I usually need another energy collector. I'm not sure why I don't need it. I'm puzzling over that, but I guess I won't worry about it. Oh, I know what it is. Ah, that's it. I usually put another mining engine on. I didn't do that. So increase to increase our yeah, I didn't do that. To increase our mining rate from 12 to 18, I put another mining engine on it. Now do we need another? Yeah, now we need a uh, an energy collector. So I'll just put one of those on. I knew something was wrong. I normally always need a second energy collector. There it is. Okay, yeah, we need 54. Now we have 100. So I forgot to put that on. I usually put that on in the beginning, and I forgot. So that's kind of messed me up a bit. All right, anyways, that's that done. And we'll come up to state bases, orbital research, upgrade you, same deal, armor only. Uh, we do have more than one sensor slot and we do have countermeasures, so we might as well utilize it. Short, uh, short range sensor. And we'll get to our special targeting here soon too, which is pretty sweet. And weaponry, we'll just go with lasers in the two small amounts on the top, and then missiles on the two larger ones. There we go. And then once again, crew systems, anti-boarding. Should come up to about the same value as the uh, space... Oh, I didn't look after I took that one off. I think 650 sounds right. And we need another energy collector and space reactor. So that's exactly what I was expecting, which is perfect. I didn't screw anything up. <laughs> awesome. All right, so there's the lab and the spaceport. I'm not going to do much to this other than maybe give it a couple of deflectors. I'm going to have a 
week kicking around this, hopefully, if I can afford that. And I'll put uh, two of each armor and deflectors on that. And I think I'm going to go with a couple close-in weapons on the two point defense slots. And I think after we fix power and everything, that's about all we're going to be able to do here. So we need another reactor. Another crew system. And I think that pretty much fills us. Now I could probably put the short, uh, short range sensor on it. It's only size 5, so I do have room for that. And... It gives us a little bit of countermeasures and targeting bonus. So let's so throw that in too. We got room for it. If it fits, it ships. Looks fine. All right, so all of those should retrofit automatically. If not, we'll give it a little nudge to get it done. Okay, once again, I'd be coming down and clicking that retrofit button real quick. And yeah, I can't do that with that smelly lab because we don't want to retrofit that yet. That's automatically getting done. That's automatically getting done. Spaceport needs a bit of a nudge, so we'll give that a quick click. And we'll check our mining stations just to see if they got done. No. That one's done. That one's done. That one needs to be done. If you hover over, you see we get 664 credits for each one of these upgrades. Boom. Okay, so they're all done. I will have to retrofit this one that's going down out here because I didn't get the design done in time. So what we need now, you know, it looks like I got a bit of money as some escorts. At this point, we need to look at some military. And now, no time like the present, so let's go look at that. Uh, we'll come to the state bases, and we will add an escort. Add new escort. And various infos here. It's got ship uh, bonuses, uh, speed bonuses, and maneuvering bonuses. So we'll auto-generate this one. And I think... That's not better than too many fuel cells. I don't have a problem with this. That's fine. Good to go. A couple laser cannons. Moving nice and quick. 76 will be able to catch stuff. Perfect. It's a Defender 1, and it is a Laser Guardian. Oops. All right. And we'll save that. And we'll build some of those. They cost 2,600, so we'll call, say, 27, so 5,400 for two. Should be able to get four of them right away. So let's bring up our spaceport, which I didn't bookmark yet. I usually have that bookmarked as Control-0, so I just hit the zero key and come back to it. All right, so let's build some escorts. One, two, three, and four. Oh, I can get five? Go for it. A half pack. I usually go for 10. 10 packs work pretty darn good. And more ships the merrier for Gazarian. So, great new fleet. I'm not going to worry about a template right now, but we will put you on a defend order. And we will give you same location for range. I don't want them going anywhere. Just stick around the spaceport and uh, protect stuff. Go a little bit tighter. I'm going to reassign positions in the fleet because I only have one definition for, for ships. So uh, we'll let the AI sort of redefine who's going to be core, who's going to be close escort, uh, who's going to be picket, that sort of thing. Uh, you can design all that when you uh, get into multiple ship roles. So we don't have that yet, so we will not do worry about it. And be hyper-aggressive at that location. If it comes in anywhere near us, just go, go clobber it. Throw caution in the wind and go get it. Uh, I'm going to call this the First Strike Force. All right. All right, first fleet designed. Cool. And I've been completely forgetting about chat here. <laughs> I'm just so focused. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's pretty good ship construction speed. Oh yeah, the yeah the um, yeah, ship maintenance savings is forty percent. Ship construction speed, where is that? Fifteen percent. Yep. A lot of troop and ships minus or plus forty percent saving. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, well we're about to. We're about to attract some pirates, so I think what we'll do is... Yeah, we're about to put that mining station down. So that's going to probably trigger our pirates. 
And I'm just starting on the military ships right now, so it's going to get a little tricky. But what I'm going to do right now is pause and get ready to do this by emptying out some coffee. I'm going to take a quick break. Silver Knight, hey, how are you, man? He has returned from the wilderness, I see. Yes, I have. And I'm just about to go do something wild, so stand by. <laughs> yeah, or natural anyways. Uh, yeah, so we're going to take a quick break, just a couple minutes. I'll be right back, and we'll uh, we'll throw up our uh, pirate invitation, and we'll start dealing with them. This gets a little bit uh, on the hairy side, so we'll see how that works out when we come back. So I'll be right back in a couple minutes. Okay, we are back, as long as I hit all the right buttons. Looks like I did. Okay, so yes, we're on the verge of pirates arriving. And uh, in case you missed it, the reason I know this is happening is because I just started building our first mining station outside our home orbit. So the minute you do that, as long as you build within your home orbit, you don't trigger them. It's when you start building out to these places is what brings the pirates in. So now that we have a station just about to go down and we got our escorts building, it should get a little more interesting here shortly. So there it goes. I do like these ship models. Very cool. Oh, and there's our base down. Okay, pirate flag enabled. <laughs> Magnet in place. Okay, so since you and how's the other guy doing? Still building that one last station over there. Hasn't even started yet. Get on it. He's on his way now. There he is. So that'll go down another five grand. Oh, we can build a couple more ships. Throw a couple more in. And we'll add those to the fleet. <clears throat> Seven pack, three more and we're golden. I might be able to do that once uh, this other station goes down. Should be right quickly and then we have a full 10 pack. 10 packs work really good. Six, you can kind of scare stuff off with six, but 10 packs work really well. I never did uh, look at our, that design real close, did we? I just kind of threw stuff on, but yeah, it's got two mounts on it, <clears throat> both 180 degrees. So this isn't the greatest uh, as far as um, trying to fire behind you, 
So they're very, very vulnerable to, uh, to uh, fighters and stuff. Uh, I think the improved escorts give you one more point at the front, but it's only like a 90 degree. So directional thrusters might be a thing we'll want to invest in on these at some point. But for now, we'll just uh, go with that. Pretty early, I've not getting into too much ship designing yet, so our little escorts will carry us through for the first little bit. Ah, yeah, Silver Knight, good to see you again. I did return from the wilderness. I haven't been eaten by bears yet. But at least I'll help out wildlife if I do. Alright, so uh, 202 days left on that. And new escort. And how's our construction doing? Oh, there it is. Okay, so we got 5,900 there. So I'm going to add two more. There, we got a nine pack. Getting there. One more and I'm happy. Then I got to build S um, explorers. That's, that's like another challenge financially. Now, because I've been building stuff, you know what happens. Might as well just put 100% here for a minute. Push that out in 179 days. And then once I get out of pre-warp, maybe I might get the research done first. And then uh, once I get the research done, I'll go probably like a 50-50. Because uh, growth is just as important as research for these guys. I don't want to be uh, pulling away from the growth for too long. Another escort. Oh, and I never did bookmark that fleet control one. There we go. So now I can get back to it by hitting the one key. Ooh, 131 firepower. I'll get the pirates shaking in their boots, won't it? <laughs> their fleet destroyers are kind of nasty when they come in. Uh, they can have uh, like upwards 300 firepower. I should look at a couple things here before I go too much further. Nice to know if I'm still alive or not. Looks like it. Excellent. Everything's looking good. Even uh, like system temperatures and everything. Yeah. Game's running fantastic these days. So yeah, if you're having issues like earlier, give it another try. They, <laughs> I think they kind of rewrote the engine a little bit too to fix a lot of problems. Yes, we've almost finished in the mag bag system. Another escort. <clears throat> now, how's this mining ship or mining station doing? That's actually mining now, so the mining engine is up and running. And I don't see any pirates yet. Doesn't mean anything yet. They could still be traveling on their way. But if there's a bigger delay, then that means there's possibly other empires around us. Or something else to distract them, I'm not sure. Okay, both of these are done. So you, I'm going to get you to retrofit at the spaceport. Off you go. And you... Uh, I guess we'll go build this. And that'll be our pirate magnet location. And did we ever get... Not yet, eh? Yeah, we haven't got any luxuries at home yet. No, we haven't got any. So we're still sitting at 48 developments. So once those luxuries start flowing, uh, things are going to get a little better too. And I do need another troop. Let's just check our general here. Well, oh, a little bit of progress in the savings. I really want Swarm Lord. That will really help a lot. <clears throat> New escort. So he's minus 13 troop recruitment. And our overall troop recruitment is min or plus 10. So we're only minus 3 right now. Troop recruitment, so not too bad. Ah, can get our last ship. 
done deal. Ten pack. I'm happy. And join you to the strike force. Here we go. Ten ships. It's good to go. Uh, how's the resources after that? Uh, fuel. Still got like half our fuel. That looks fantastic. Oh, we got Zacanter at home. Perfect timing. So what happens now? We got a luxury at home. 1% from resources and growing up to 9%. So let's see what kind of effect this has. We're at 42, 45 right now. Can't wait for that to bump up to two. I am running right, I'm not paused still. <laughs> that number is climbing though. It, it, pretty slow climb, right? But there's 2%. So by the time that hits 9%, I'm guessing we'll be over 5 grand, maybe. If we're lucky. Yep, there's 44.30 now. That's from one luxury. 44.61. There's 3%. 44.92. 45.20. Yep, climb, climb, climb. Uh, state war fields are done. All right. Excellent. Okay. Uh, just maybe watch the rest of this. 4%. So five more percent coming. We're almost at five grand. And actually we'll just pop in and quickly do our cartographer here. So we can get, the, get them retrofitting. So we're going to upgrade our cartographers to have warp bubble drives. We can go much further and much faster now. Perfect. So we are also going to give these guys a little bit of protection because they get into some pretty dangerous situations. So we don't want them out naked. So we'll give them a deflector and an armor. Uh, deflectors are really good against Gravelix. So if you just go out with armor, you're probably not. Your chances are pretty slim. <laughs> uh, what else do we need here? Uh, 146 is our fuel range. I kind of like to shoot for about 200 on these. So I'll add one more fuel cell. We have a spot for it. Uh, we can go 214 now. It's usually what I shoot for. And we're a bit slow on the hyperdrive. I'm not going to worry about it. These things spend more time scanning planets than they do actually traveling between them. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. And we're pretty much at size. So that's a decent build. So we will call you a Surveyor 2 to show that we are on warp bubbles now. And you are now going to be... A sector card topographer. And we'll save you and we can get our exploration ships all retrofitting. There. While we watch the end result of this. Alright, so we're at 51% growing, five more percent coming. I just spent a bunch of money. <laughs> yep. Okay, that popped back up. Okay. So now we can adjust back down to our 1600. Wow, that's actually. There. It's still growing, so I can drop another one. Still growing, can drop some more. The power of one luxury, man. Absolutely. Growing, growing, growing. Uh, how much more do we got? Three more percent yet. I'm a little underfunded, but in a minute, done. <laughs> 7%, still two more to come. We're at 5,300 now of taxing. Uh, what's going up is uh, this number here, the entire colony revenue, which is allowing us to tax heavier, which is getting us more money and stuff. And growing at eight. So we got one more percent to go. And we're still growing, growing. That should be leveling off right quickly, right about now. Yeah, it should go static. There we go. So that's one luxury. Added pretty much, what were we at? 4,300 or something? That added 1,200 to our income from one luxury. Now, this is the best luxury, I think, normal luxury in the game, given that. Most of them are coming in at 3, 4, or something like that. Get a couple of those, you get the same effect. One luxury. Big difference. We need more luxuries. Basically, what I'm trying to say. 
And we can actually adjust this down a bit more now. Uh, we do have our warp drives, but I think I'm going to keep the research hot until we get the labs done. And then we'll try to... Well, we're almost at a 50-50 now anyway, so I'm almost funded the way I like it, but the pirate... We're probably going to have to pay one pirate. It's going to mess up all this, of course. Okay, so how do we make out with our explorers? You get done. A couple of them are. Perfect. We're out. We're out and about. Oot and a boot. <laughs> Being a Canadian and all, I guess I got to pronounce that right. Oot and a boot. Seriously, I never hear anybody sit, pronounce, pronounce it like that. I don't know where that comes from, but I've never heard anybody in my life say that. I think it's kind of the French language or the French accent, speaking English, that it comes out a bit with. Yeah. But I've never seen, heard anybody, well, I'm going oot for a bit. No, I've never heard that. <laughs> uh, how reliable is that firepower figure to the effectiveness of a ship? It can be really far off uh, how good the ship actually is. I know from some games can make sort of thing a newbie trap. Yeah, there's a bit of, like, when you go into the designs, like, let's have a look at this one. Yeah, attack strength and defense strength. Well, then you go out in the other screen and it's a different number. Like, I haven't really stopped to figure out how that all works, but... Uh, yeah, like if we come out, go to our fleet, and pick one of these. It's 26. How do I get 26 from this number? I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, when I'm designing, I don't really even look here. I wait till it's built, and then I look here, just to see what the strength is. Uh, 4.5, uh, max DPS and uh, average DPS, 4.5 and 3.2. Uh, we're here, weapons, weapons. Yeah. I always come out here and look at the actual ship strengths. I don't really look at them in the designer, so I'm not really sure how that the, the strengths and defense and everything. But it, it's all wrapped into one strength number those three stats up here i believe it's calculated from all these stats here that determine your strength and again i think admirals and everything will adjust that number if your admiral has better attack strength than that i'm not sure what it translates on this line but it does affect your attack strength anyways uh do we have any money no we don't i still need troops on the ground don't i hmm. i got two that's Okay, I would like three. Now uh, we got one more uh, base coming down here. So I'll get a bit of money in a sec here. Where are the pirates? Okay, that tells me there's possibly an empire right in the earth. Uh, where's north? There. There's possibly an empire near us then. They're distracted. They've triggered before me, so they're probably all over clobbering them. Yeah, I don't know if it's good news or bad news uh, whenever the pirates are delayed. Kind of good news, but uh, let's get a couple more explorers going. Got a bit of money. Double that number. And that other one's ready to go. This one here we just retrofitted. Eh, go that away. Let's see what's on there. Uh, it's a boot, the accent from the Maritime Canada. Oh, okay. That makes sense, I guess. I've just never heard anybody in my life ever say that. I guess I don't hang around with enough Maritimers. <laughs> Bring these people on the planet, by the way. Yeah, go to go to the Maritimes. Yeah, it's just nothing but host. Yeah, they're they're awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what are you doing? You are... You're good to go build elsewhere. I got our first two stations that I'm looking for. I want the pirates before I build anything else, though. I want them to gravitate here first. Before I start building fuel and other stuff. Getting a little short on fuel. I think our miners are actually going up and getting some, so. Yeah, they're on their way now. 
Uh, we got some Necrostone stuff coming in. How many freighters do we have? Uh, one thing I think I'll do right now is upgrade our private sector to have uh, skip drives so they can move around a little faster, or warp bubbles so they can move around a little faster. That'll make uh, resource flow quite a bit quicker. So, Cargo 2000 smaller hauler needs a bit more power. And, got a deflector, that's fine. And, don't have a whole lot of excess power, so I'm not going to bother with... Uh, Oh, you already got the scanner. Okay, never mind. I was going to say I don't have enough power to put the scanner on, but or the sensor on, but it's already there, so that's fine. Save and go. And we'll do the same thing to the mining ship. And we'll come over and we'll go 2,000 remote extractor. One more uh, uh, reactor. And I don't really have enough to put a sensor on this one, so I won't bother. Tiny bit slow already. And again, I'm not going to worry about fuel range quite yet. I'll wait till we actually get fuel mining. Viper to Heave! How are ya? Um, the joint thing isn't working. I'm not... Uh, just let me check. Maybe it is. I have no names. No, it's not working. I'm not sure why, so... I've been just picking names from chat. Whenever I need to name something, I just look over to chat and just see whose name I see. <laughs> Do we need to name anybody else? I think we got everybody. Uh, yeah. uh, Overlord Finnegan, un Unacceptable Views, and Casper Minning. We don't have any new spies, so stick around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I tried a couple times before stream to get it working and it didn't work. So All the other commands seem to be working. It's not that one. Uh, there is a slider on there that, that slip, put it on and off. You know, start, stop and start it up again to see if it works. But no go. Ah, exploration ships are done. We'll zoom out and we'll get you guys off. Check for fuel first. Even though I'll probably forget to do it myself later, it's good advice. <laughs> uh, maybe you we'll slip over. Pirates! Pirates! Oh my God! Pirates! <laughs> now, where do they end up? Oh. Are they not even in here? Where do we meet them? Oh, they're in here somewhere. Oh, they're around here. I just didn't see a, a warning sign here. So, here they are. Uh, we have encountered a new pirate faction in the Magbag system, the Burning Rock Guild. And they're probably predominantly composed of Gizurians, the same as us. Although they are pirates, they could be proofful, uh, proved to be useful allies to handle properly. Initial communications have been extremely successful. Okay, so uh, looking here, we can see that they distrust us because of our limited experience and they have contempt for a civilized complacency. This is the number I look at whenever I get a pirate. Because minus 7 going up at 0.5 a year, that's 14 years before that goes away. Not too bad on this guy. Right? However, if you get somebody with minus 20 or minus 25 on that, and it's 0.5 for that to go away, you're going to be throwing a big amount of money at them to bring them around. If they're not going to come around easily. You're going to spend a ton of cash on them trying to get deals with them, uh, non-aggression. I go for the lower one, the lower uh, contempt values. Fourteen years isn't bad. Um, I've I've seen less, so I'm thinking this one isn't a bad one to pay. And I do want at least one, two, maybe on my payroll because it does help with exploration a bit. I get to see early who's beside me and stuff when they do tr uh, map deals. It's decent information to have. So I wouldn't just go out and absolutely fight all of them unless you absolutely have to. But uh, bring a couple on. Then they tend to fight each other too. So there's always that. So if we accept this deal, that's going to go up to, what, minus six or something. There we go. And we have signed a new treaty. And we they and this is going to creep up. I think it goes up eight, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to gain eight and then lose ten <laughs> eventually. So yeah, there we go. We got a production agreement with the first pirate we met. 
So no, no capturing these ships. And pirates, it appears we have company. Yes, we know. They look well armed, more technologically technologically advanced, absolutely. And there's a lot of stuff here. Have a quick look. Uh, new explorer done. I think I took care of those already. And unknown items still here. So I don't know. We don't know what that rune is yet. And unknown items that. Uh, okay, so we finished scanning this. This is another system, I think. Yeah. So if I was doing a trying start, I'd be coming in and checking all these different planet types, finding out what I'm short on. Is there a possibility that it's there? Well, don't go there. I need you to go there and look for that. Normal stars, you don't really need to do. So I think we're going to get well supplied and everything. 10% uh, scenery, we're not worried about that yet. And another cartographer. Uh, yes, but I'll build it myself at the spaceport. Two of them. Yes, exploration becomes king at this point. All right, off we go. Uh, yeah, the, the bot's still saying, hey, type join and you can join, but it doesn't join. So, Bad bot, bad, bad bot. Okay, uh, we got those done. So the first pirate has come in, which I think means that any other ones should trigger here or here. Because I'm going to start building up my other stuff, I think. Uh, I'm going to hide the... Oops. Let's stop. Hide the uh, asteroids, which it wasn't showing me any anyways. But uh, we got carbonite, polymer. That's a good location there. there the, yeah, I'm going to have to build all these, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I might try this one first. I'm kind of working backwards to my priorities. I kind of want fuel and carbonate right away, but I'm going to work backwards and kind of do those last so that they're not, they're not uh, pirate, tr pirate triggers. That way my fuel can flow, my carbonate can flow. This isn't 100%. They will get bored at the trigger location I just set up, and they'll start wandering to homeworld and everything. But it does uh, help with the first encounters. So I think we'll go with that one. And like I said, I'm going to save fuel for last, I think. And we'll get the carbonite. Uh, actually, go get the Tiderius. We'll get the Tiderius next. Which is over by our fuel, which is probably a good thing, but so is that. <laughs> We're probably going to be a challenge keeping stuff flowing with all this. Yeah, usually there's much more stuff in the home world, but uh, not this time. Oh, well, we'll work through it. Now, generally, when I roll a map, I just play the map. Unless it's a super crappy starting location, but uh, because of the live stream, I want a specific start. So. <clears throat> but when I get to my pre-recorded series next week, you'll see how I actually play this game. This is actually a bit easier than I usually do. Just for momentum purposes. Yeah, some of the games I play are just not meant for live streams. It's just way too long-winded, as we saw last week. This is probably pretty long-winded, too, but I think we actually got out of a few more. In three hours? I guess that's okay. <laughs> uh, it's still not through a decade of the game. I don't think I'm going any faster than it did last week, am I? Somebody said it was four and a half hours to get through the first decade of the game. We're getting close on that. Ah, uh, shit, those ugly, ugly bubbles off there. Aha, another pirate. This one's gone poorly. Okay, so they've come in here again. Uh, this one has gone poorly. As you can see, we have minus 18 contempt. 36 years of contempt before that goes away. They're going to need a lot more money to actually deal with. Uh, I think I'm going to skip this one. That's going to be just way too much money to try to bring around. So we're going to just hit you with a conquer. Try for a more friendly one next time. So they're going to start coming in and bashing our stuff around a bit. First contact, but second contact, but okay, we'll go with it. <laughs> and they brought five ships, is what it looks like. Uh, we have... 
Escorts. All escorts. And what are they doing? Attack final trap. Uh oh. Uh, how's my fleet? Fleet is finished. Uh, do we have a final trap here? Yep, there it is. They're coming over to attack this ship. So they're heading to my home world. Straight away. See that. Uh, Okay, see the names of the ships here? Cataclysm of Magbag. Fist of Magbag. Magbag Retribution. That's because we renamed our star. So all our ships are getting themed around that. Which is pretty cool. And you're offering protection. I'm going to decline that again. And we'll kick this thing up. Here we go. That's not bad. It's all escorts. So I'm kind of happy about that. Not happy that they're coming after my home world right away, but uh, how's the budget looking actually? Ugh. Well, I don't know. I should probably go with a 50-50 at this point. Uh, how's growth looking? Uh, 3.4. Maybe we'll just do a 50-50. I kind of like these research labs first though. Here, tell you what, let's push out the research labs and then we'll do a 50-50 for the growth. We'll work it that way. We'll just, I just want to push through and get our better values on our uh, labs before I actually start robbing uh, potential from them. Okay, we have Dayutes as well. They've come in at the same spot, a pirate magnet. And initial communication with Dayutes has been catastrophically bad. Okay, let's see how bad this one is. That's 50 years of contempt. We'll never pay these guys. We'll never get them paid. So they actually have to go straight to a conquer situation. Okay, there's two two unfriendlies and one friendly. And the friendlies have left, so they're no use to us. Yeah, they took off, so. All right, and they are at Homeworld. And whereabouts are they? They are all sort of scattered around this area. Uh, where is the closest one to our fleet? Oh, where is our fleet, actually? It's right there, okay. You're there. You're right there. You're way out there. Um, now, if I go get that one, it's going to leave this vulnerable to, like, these guys. I think what I might do is go after this one. So I'm going to hit an attack order on him. And they're all going to congregate and head over towards him. There's two others coming in with them. So if I can hit him hard, then uh, go after one of the other ones. Let's see how this works out. So they're shooting at our various uh, ships. And here comes our fleet. I think they're going after this one first. This up nag bag. Oh no, that's uh, that safe. Indication. Yeah, so they're going to come over and smack this down. We got more pirates probably over by that moon. I'm not going to ever uh, scooch over. Oh, this one's been successful. Minus 18, though. It's still 24, hour, uh, 24 years of complacency. And we don't like us any rodents, do we? No, you guys are lunch. Yeah, go away. Do your worst. I'm sure they will. Shields are down. These 10 packs take these down in a hurry. Okay, so I'm going to wait until uh, they're disabled. If they are, they're not doing anything. I'm not sure why, but I'm going to start shooting at this one. Okay, reactor off. So I'm still firing shots at it, but they're going after this one now. He's trying to jump out. That hyperdrive offline, and then we'll go up the next one. Okay, that one blew up. Come on, get him. Now he's gone. Okay. Get that one. Ah, I'm getting the spaceport in there. Attack that. There we go. But as you can see, a 10-pack takes the shields and armor down real quick. 
jump away and you should be able to stop him, I'm hoping. The, the bases are firing on him as well. And there we go. Boom. Hey, there was no shattering. Kaboom! <laughs> I didn't get a fireball. What the hell's up with that? Okay, where's everybody else now? So that's uh, that little cluster of ships gone. He's coming over. Uh, we got four left in here. So we got one right at our spaceport, which is unfortunate. Two of them right at our spaceport. Uh, and an escort here. So I'm going to come over and try and attack this one. And then we'll head over towards the spaceport. Which is taken on fire. It's not in for repair. So let's get that one. Uh, looks like he's coming over to attack us anyways. So he's getting, he, they're coming away from the spaceport, which is good news. Um, we'll just slow that down a bit. Yeah, we're fine. Back to regular speed. New exploration ships are done. Uh, okay, we'll look at that in a quick second. I do tend to get distracted by the pirates here a bit. Uh, who's this? Oh, friendlies, I think. No. Nope. No, that's the Teak and Pirates. So the Pirates are starting to attack each other, too. Oh, no, they're attacking us. Okay, well, we'll finish with this ship, and then we'll maybe come over. This is a fleet destroyer, or fleet frigate. That needs to get out of my sky in a hurry. Uh, you're still jumping, so take a few more shots at him. Hyperdrive offline, please. Go, go, go. Ah, he's gone. Okay. First fleet. Uh, that's a fleet frigate as well. Okay, well, this one's right beside us, so let's go for that. Man, I wish I had boarding pods right now. Those ones that have been escaping would have boarding pods on them already, and then I'd get them back after uh, they captured the ship. But unfortunately, I don't have that tech yet. Uh, we still got to deal with our explorers here, too. Get it, get it. Four jumps. Get that out of my sky. There we go. Okay, now that that's offline, let's grab this ship. We'll uh, get them and attack that one. Which is almost ready to go down. And what else do we have here? Just the two. Okay, so all the other ships are gone now. And that one's about to go to full kaboom, I think. Earth shattering kaboom, that's what I want. And then finish that one off. Good job, guys. There we go. <laughs> the first the first encounter can be a little intense, but uh, yeah, we got through that. Uh, now, what's going on out here now? Uh, we still have pirates attacking this thing. Um, I'm not sure if they've uh, tried raiding that yet, but I'm sure that's what they're coming in for. And the pirates are actually fighting each other. There's a fleet destroyer. So we get fleet destroyers coming at us first thing on, uh, on the strong level. If we went to very strong, we'd have cruisers as well. But this is a top ship for them, for this uh, particular level. Pirate. And 242 firepower. Our fleets have 199. There's 10 of them. <laughs> so. All right. So uh, actually, let's check out our exploration. We've got a couple more of these ready to go. And we will get you guys out and about. Out and about. And there's a star up here somewhere. Is that it? Yep. Go get that one. And that's everybody busy. And we can actually build a couple more. Okay. Construction, what are you up to? Still building. Good. Looks like you're being left alone too. Excellent. And now we're picking up the loot. 
So we come over here. These guys are scooting around, picking up all the loot that fell off all the station just, just, just destroyed. So we're getting bonuses for that. We've got detailed maps of ZD-507. Thank God, I was wondering what was on that. And we found some fraction firestones too. Eight percent calling development. Where is that? Pretty close. Excellent. And we already did that. So we can go away. All right, carry on. Eighty percent on our uh, on our uh, research labs. The pirates are attempting to raid the mining station. Yes, they are. The big bad bully ship. Fleet destroyer, man. So what's happening now? Um, in case you're not aware of how I do this, this is how I deal with pirates and my now mining stations and research labs in the early game. Deflectors are garbage. I don't like them on my bases anyway. So good on ships, bases not so much because pirates tend to. Uh... <clears throat> this one actually isn't. Uh, they tend to pack rail guns, which are a shield skipping weapon. But basically what I've done is, because there's no shields on the station, I've left the front door wide open. So they're going to shoot their uh, boarding pods here in a sec. There they come. Immediately in. They didn't have to take shields down or nothing. Uh, they're just shooting at our missiles. But, damage. Zero damage. Research breakthrough. Well, selves a Hive Hulk in the Magbag system, we found technology has given us a research breakthrough in hyperdrive technology. It didn't. It did. <laughs> that is a super expensive tech, and we just got it for nothing. We found it on a piece of junk. Wow, I um I need a minute. I need a minute with this. <laughs> I've never had this happen before. This is the kind of stuff I, I play the early game for because this has never happened before. This is new for me. It's little events like this that keep me interested. So now we can go fast. We can go anywhere now. We need to do some retrofitting. Uh I kind of need more money first though. Uh, what does this take for resources? Uh, ooh. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at the research cost. Yeah, we saved ourselves 2,000 credits, 200 emerald crystal, 200 nectar stone, 200 polymer, 200 carbonate, and 200 mebnar to actually initiate this research. So we don't have to spend those resources anymore. Uh, can I colonize yet? Not yet. Um, that's still a little ways away. I should get on that. That's that's amazing. For this point in the game, that's amazing to have that. Um, I might actually... Should I retrofit our uh, explorers, maybe? At least? And we also got value treasure at 15,000. That's handy, too. Wow. This is only ships is good, but just blowing them up gives you some good stuff, too. That's crazy good. That is crazy good. And I got enough money to rush this now. And we should probably uh, queue up some other stuff. Yeah, see, these jerks take a lot of power, too. I might need uh, reactor upgrades before I can effectively use those. Uh, jump accuracy, jump range. Uh, I don't know how, how I can judge that from here. I'm pretty sure they take more power. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's no real power. Oh, hyperdrive. Energy is there. It's 61 per second from... Oh, it's actually more efficient in energy. We might be alright to actually just go ahead and do, use those. So, maybe what we'll do... Is we'll upgrade these to Jerex. He can go 400k now and 591 with a click of a button. <laughs> and we're too over though uh i guess for now i could go without a fuel cell i don't really need to go that far right but 
we can go 400k to get there this is awesome the average gamer hey how are you man good to see ya okay yeah so we have cherries already that's crazy good crazy good yeah no, they're more efficient do i actually need that yeah i still need that out of the reactors so that's fine wow all right well there's our explorers and we'll just turn them around and upgrade them i'll start with these two um how can i determine which ones what i guess just click on this look here oh actually before i do that i gotta adjust the name though i'm not used to having these so early it's going to be a survey of three and i'm going to call that a star cartographer It's a startographer. <laughs> Our startographer. There we go. All right. Guess what? I'm going to build that last one right now. There. So he's going to be able to go way far. Excellent. Wow. I'm actually excited now. <laughs> Can boldly go where no one else has gone before. Uh, well, I guess we still got pirates and stuff to deal with. Jerris isn't going to help us out with that. Uh, same pirate. He's bringing some more pods for raiding. I guess. Yeah, here comes another one. Re raiding. Still not a stitch of damage. We didn't have to deal with the shield, so. Am I anti-boarding? I don't think we've seen any alerts that they got away with anything. Oh, what was that last one? Treasure. 15-6. Wow. Nice. Yeah, not a stitch of damage. So that's how I save my stations in the beginning. I just don't use shields. They do more damage than they save. Why use them? It's my whole point. Not just defense action. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Oh, escorts are under attack again. Okay. Oh, is everybody fragmented here? Pretty much. Uh, okay, everybody congregate on him. The high gates. Oh, this is that rune that we were uh, wondering about over here. So give me that location. This is where the pirates are hitting all the time. We discovered the high gate of Jajadur. Ancient uh, runes from a lost civilization. Should we investigate? Absolutely. Okay, uh, we found data core containing coordinates of an independent colony. The colony can be found at the planet Manabu in the Z Zatau system. To try and integrate this colony into our empire, either through diplomacy or colonization or by invasion. It's a buffet. You found a buffet. Note that while we know the location that's calling, they currently know nothing about us. We should send a ship to make contact with them. Okay, so we can't contact them yet, but uh, we know of them. And they have some runes. That gives us 6% troop research. I'm going to hit this button right now. I think we should be able to do that. Uh, so another research lab that's pretty good considering we're deserving so that's what one two three four research labs in our home system nice and a scenery bonus which we're not really concerned with yet very good and a new spy there we go we got a new spy finally and our new spy is going to be called the average gamer sorry for your luck <laughs> The average gamer okay well let's maybe pick a target to spy on who can we spy on well not the diutes they're pretty good at espionage uh, racially so we probably should avoid them uh hunted storm might be okay now i think our species has a 10 percent counter espionage or am i thinking somebody else 
I might be thinking of somebody else. Counter espionage. No, 10%. We do have a 10% counter espionage. Which means they're going to have... Uh, is that from our race? No, it's from our government. So they don't have a, uh, a counter espionage trait. Oh, not them. Them. Yeah, them. So they don't have a counter espionage trait. So the Sinister Rock Horde. Let's see how we make out with them. Sinister Rock Horde, and we'll steal some research off them. Uh, they look a little tiny bit difficult. It's usually a 57%, which is basically 50-50 chance. This look, either that or this spy isn't that great. He's average, being an average gamer and all. <laughs> oh boy, here I go to get captured immediately again. Oh, did you that happen before when we played? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's usually 57% for basic transport. So that tells me this spy might, uh, let's try the Tekans maybe. Haunted Storm. Let's try them and see what, see what they're like. Yeah, this spy isn't, uh, he doesn't have, uh, traits. So we're going to have to take a chance here. I think we had a better chance with the other ones. Well, we're going to send you out anyway. Transport system, 45. It's kind of a 50-50 chance. You know, flip a coin. See how you make out. Off you go. Hmm. Small freighter. And that's at home world. And yes, we're still dealing with this stuff. So, uh, that's a spy. That's that. That's this. Okay. And we are attacking this now. <laughs> Government says, at least you'll go on a mission. He says, I was eaten after my rival framed me on my home world. <laughs> All right, hit him. Ah, oh, he's jumping out to go refuel. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, let's grab this guy then. He's gone too. Anybody left? A couple. He's over on the other side. They're coming after my home world. I didn't get another troop down. That's that's not good. I'll try one now. Sometimes they get destroyed in half construction. Yeah, two will probably be okay, but three makes me a little more comfortable. Alright, the rating scamp prime. Yeah, we're fine. We got lots of population, I think, is uh helping us out here too. Uh, what's this all about? Under attack, okay. Um, I'm gonna have to do that. Uh, and, they, yep. and did they get anything? They've withdrawn, but it doesn't look like they got anything. And they're off for fuel. So, let them get out. I'm gonna just move back to the spaceport at this point. And there's still one ship in here. He's heading out as well. And our research labs are done, finally. And we have no research queued up, so we better go take care of that right away. Uh, I'm just going to issue a guard order, just to bring them kind of back to here. And we'll put them back on defend. Okay, so. Ah. <laughs> Silver linings, yep. Uh, we have uh, our research labs done. So let's go and take care of that. Is it going to be very important going forward? So, orbital research. Let's upgrade this. Should be just an up, uh, upgrade, save, and go. Uh, upgrades are two labs. Shouldn't blow any power or anything out. And, yep, good to go. So, upgraded us from basic labs to research labs. So, that, that's done. Same thing here. Save and go. That gets those retrofitted. And we'll come over to our science. And we'll just make sure everything... Oh, actually, we'll uh, queue up some more. Okay, what do we want next? Boarding. It's a no-brainer at this point. Boarding. Then maybe we'll get a better, or a bit better deflectors on our ships, which would be def definitely helpful. And then more boarding strength, I think, is how we're going to come out. So I'm going to stay on one lab for the ship boarding. And then once I get here, I'm going to open up to two, because I'm going to need both of these things at the same time-ish. 
Uh, they're just upgrades we don't have to retrofit to. So we'll retrofit to the shipboarding, and then these two will be just improvements as we uh, write stuff off. Yes, we still got Jerex to deal with. Uh, I should almost put, our, put the private sector on Jerex. Uh, one thing I should check is, do they, oops. Did the uh, Jerex drive need anything special as far as resources? No, I was just wondering if they needed hexadorium or drilling. They don't, so that's fine. Because those are two things I don't think I've found yet. Uh, speaking of which, yeah, I still got to build some stuff out here. Uh, carbonite, I think I got queued up to go, don't I? Uh, carbonite, no. Yeah, it looks like we're stopped, so we'll get you to go get the carbonite, which is over by your fuel, I think. So we'll get you to go build that. Okay. And we're still got a, an attack going on over here. Where are you? No, you're, you're the one heading out. Okay, fine. Awesome. Shipboarding on its way. I could just rush it out to gate, I guess. I'd much rather be capturing than destroying. So I think this is a pretty important technology as well. And one other thing we can do now. Oh, where's that lab location? That was at the this one here. The smelly labs. That can be retrofitted as well now. Because it has it has deflectors on it. If the pirates come at this, they're gonna do damage to get at this one. Because there's deflectors on it. I think there's two of them. So if they have real guns, they're going to do a hell of a lot of damage trying to bring these two uh, shield levels down so they can board. So I think I'm just going to retrofit those to my own design. It's going to take a minute, unfortunately, because it's a pretty much a hull upgrade. So we're going to retrofit you to Lab 1, Orbital Research. There it goes. And we're at 34% construction, so that's brought everything back down. It's like a new build, basically. So we build out the hull, and then we got to rebuild our research lab, which will be first after the hull. It's actually being built right now. So we'll get our research points back very quickly. So yeah, research is a bit lacking at the moment. So funding's going to look a little weird. I don't have a whole lot of funding here anyways. But now that we got our research labs, I think I'm just going to go with a 50-50 here. And we'll put half our money into growth. Because that's just as important as research for these guys. And again, the only reason I'm doing this manually is for this. So that I don't keep them to 585 credits up here when they could be down here doing something useful. Okay, this is a new explorer ship with the Jarek's Drive. I think. Uh, Surveyor 3, yes. What's your fuel range? Not bad. Your speed is amazing. So where do we want to go? We can pick any of these stars now. I guess we'll just continue on close by home to get things done. And these guys I'm going to send right back for retrofit. They just came out of the, uh, the shipyard. So I'm going to send them right back in for retrofit to get this, the uh, Jarek's drives. And did I do this? I know I was going to come in and do it. I don't think I did do it. I can upgrade our private sector to have Jerry Strives too. They'll be like, be able to get uh, resources their uh, home really quick. This is an incredible, incredible uh, piece of luck getting that right now. That's going to help our early game big time. Things will flow quicker. Uh, so uh, upgrading you, uh, I don't need to put any more hyperdrive power. Now usually I have to put another reactor on when I uh, go to the warp drives or whatever, right? But uh, these are actually more efficient. I was expecting more power, but they don't use it. I think that's probably fine. Smaller hauler, and it can go 429 without even putting any more fuel on it. That's amazing. And we'll call you a cargo 3000. Smaller hauler, done. Same thing here. Don't need anything there. 413. Yeah, we can probably put a sensor on you. There. Rename you to uh, DIG 3000 remote extractor. There. 
Private sector is full speed ahead. Good choice. It's not going to make a huge difference right now. We don't, you know, in our system, big deal. I got Jerex. But once we get out here, this stuff's going to flow a lot quicker. And we are under attack over here again, of course. Still not a stitch of damage. It's probably a bit of an exploit to do this. I don't know. <laughs> probably get patched out at some point. I won't be able to do this anymore. They'll do damage regardless. Our missiles took down their shields a little bit, but that's definitely not enough to do anything. Here comes Pod 1. Now, they bring enough ships at once, they can overwhelm your anti boarding or anti rating. And that just might happen here. That's getting pretty close. And they got two more ships approaching, too. I think it's the same pirate. Yeah. Here comes another pod. Yeah. They, I think this one will overwhelm. There's still a chance that we might not lose anything. Like I said, it's not 100%, but for the couple ships that usually come by your stations, it's usually enough. Yeah, he shot another one. And of course, we got a pop up here. But yeah, that's uh, that's going to probably overwhelm our station defenses, so there's a possibility they might get stuff off of this one. It doesn't happen very often, but there's a possibility. Independent Colony Mortalins. Where are you? That's mad. That's... That's the Tekans over here. So we got Mortalins over here. 184 million of them. Oh, you got a desert planet. That's probably too far out. Yeah, I'm not going to get a reading on that. Uh, initial communications have been extremely successful. Well, I probably don't care. We don't like us no mortalins. So we might integrate you and eat you. <laughs> you might be for lunch. We'll have you over for lunch. There's the lone trader. He told he's the guy that told us about it. So he just uh, came in with some information about that. And that's the independent colony and mortalins. Nasty reptile mammals. Ugh. At least they don't smell like a teakin. So there's that. Yeah, so I'm going to leave that lab here. I'm going to leave it named the Smelly Engine Construction Labs because even though we did a complete teardown and a complete scrub out and a build up, a teak and smell is still there. It's like cats and carpet. You can't get rid of it. So the name remains. <laughs> Oh, we got a ship over here. Oh, they're on a refuel order. Yeah, they're out of here. I love it, eh? The minute you fire one shot. Oh, I need fuel. I gotta go. Chickens. Bunch of chickens. <clears throat> Holy crap, we're approaching the four-hour mark. This game. This game is dangerous. And you guys are kind of splitting up a bit, aren't you? No? Okay, well, on one target, he's kind of under the rock right now. Okay. And he's gone. Oh, yeah. Oh. I need fuel. Oh, yeah, chicken shit. <laughs> Guard. Ah, they failed to tame loot. So they brought all that boarding, got on. I thought I would, they were going to overwhelm my defenses, and they didn't. They failed to retain me. Perfect. So we didn't lose anything. Excellent. Uh, how's our exploration going? Uh, these guys are probably retrofitted now. You know what? I'm just going to automate this. Now they've got Jerex, I mean, I kind of don't care. Here, I'll just automate those. Once they get Jerex drives, I think we'll just automate. Uh, you have the Jerex drives? Yes. We'll get this off my plate, so I don't have to keep doing this. You go retrofit. I'll let them finish what they're doing, and I'll just send them all for retrofit at that point. Uh, you're doing asteroids. 
Just go retrofit them. And you're doing asteroids as well. Go retrofit and automate. Okay, we'll I'll wait for the, the other ones to finish up. Scenery. Well, we're not worried about scenery yet. I should rush this tech though. I'll pay that. Uh, that is now going to be less than a year. We can upgrade our uh, our escorts to have boarding capabilities, and I won't be blowing up the ships. I'll be capturing them. And I got tons of money. What do we need to do here? What's our budget like right now? Uh, I did go 50-50, didn't I? Okay, so let's look at our growth rates here. 3.9. Less than a year to get a piece of research that's rushed. That's not too bad, I don't think. And we found some more detailed maps. Bag bag. That must be the star. I guess they maybe gave us a bit more information about the star. All right. I need 1600 to uh, fund our research and then 2600 to fund our growth. <clears throat> Did we get any more luxuries at home? Looks like we might have 62%. I got two at home now. We got the tracking granite too. So that's an extra five. So we're at 14% now, the two luxuries. We're at seven grand. So that's all coming up nicely. Uh, I might put some more troops on the ground, though. Uh, check our general here. Might put one more. Ah, come on, Swarm Lord, where are you? I want that trait. Ah, another new spy. And, oh, a map deal. Okay, let's deal with the spy here first. Okay. Diamond. Should we try again? Let's see how good you are this time. At least you'll get to get to go outside this time. Not just completely uh, destroyed. Uh, research. Oh. I think my spy game's gonna suck this time around. I got him going for basic troop trans. Let's try basic space commerce. See what we make out. Okay, so pirates. Let's have a look at this now. Where are you at? You're at one. I got enough money to maybe do this. So I might be able to get my uh, non aggression greeting uh, uh, agreement right now. So, I'm going to take this map deal, so we'll accept that, and he gave us this one up here, and you what? So we're at four, so I think I got enough money, I can probably get away with a medium gift, I think that'll be enough, I could be wrong on this, uh, medium gifts is usually about ten, give or take a point or two. Or has that been adjusted? I'm not sure. I could lock it in and just give him 37.5. Off we go. But I think I'm going to try the medium gift first. Gets us to 15. Offer treaties. Non-aggression. Done. Pirate paid. Get our funding back. Now I'm fully funded. Well, on the research anyways. But uh, yeah. That's uh, helped out immeasurably. So I got one friendly pirate and the other three are... I'm going to die, I hope. <laughs> so there we go. Pirate agreement done. <clears throat> Unacceptable abuse. Run! <laughs> yeah, I hadn't running straight for the Red Rock or, or Sinister Rock Horde. So, that, that's awesome we got that gone. We're doing fairly well, I think. <clears throat> oh, I see color. We have another empire over here. We got a cool spy. That might be our Tekans we set up. 
Lunch. We can have lunch. Uh, research labs go down. Oh, am I getting? Why did my research drop out? My research has dropped out. Oh, did we do a retrofit? Might be just a temporary thing. Hang on. Uh, something being boarded here, maybe. Ah, no. Where's that ship? Right there. No, nothing's getting boarded. I don't know why my research dropped out. All right, I'll let it run and see if it comes back. All right, here we come. I sure wish I had my boarding right now, but here they come. Something's going on with my research. I'm not sure what it is. It's complete. The average gamer. <clears throat> and we found some Bifurian silk. Colony development, 1% colony income. That'll help. Okay, uh, the average gamer is successful after basic transport system. So let's see what kind of traits we spawned here. He's got concealment, but no espionage. Yeah, chances aren't good here. We can spawn an espionage trait would be fine, but... I think you're a little on the weak side at the moment. I'm gonna have to take a chance here. Well, back for transport, I guess. 50-50 chance. And we might spawn an espionage trait. Off you go. Welcome aboard. <laughs> And our construction is done. <clears throat> so, I don't know what else we have in here. I guess we got this one here. Nothing on it. Got the tight areas. We got all that. Uh, got that. Got that. I think we're kind of done in here. Oh, I haven't got this yet. I haven't got the silicon yet. So, grab that. Uh, and we got this one here. I don't think I have a station. Yeah, I got a station there already, too. I think we're done in our system. Let's put Jarek's on our uh, construction ships. <laughs> I'm going straight from a build one to a build three. Please skipping a level of hyperdrive with these. All right, Jarek's got enough power. Looks good. 400. You can go 361, which is fine, I think, for now. Uh, still got room, so let's give you a bit of protection. Oops. Shields and armor. I'm always tempted to get these weapons, but... Yeah, I think we'll sidestep it. It should be fine. Yeah, I don't know. Good to go. Oh, well, three. God, we're skipping a number. Okay, we'll send him for retrofit. And then we'll send him out to go build stuff outside our system, finally. See what's out here. You guys are all busy still. So, what do we got? Uh, all this stuff is outside our system. We can't get to... Oh, did I have to build the fuel yet? Um, okay. Are you still going for retrofit? Maybe we'll just go do that first. You're jumping now. I, f I thought I did the fuel. I guess I didn't. Okay, we'll do the fuel before we do that. Then. Glad it looked here. It just left without fuel and fuel. Got more fuel out here. More carbonate. Two more luxuries. A new ambassador. Uh, question. Do we know where any pirates are yet? Doesn't look like it. Nope. So basically what I do with our ambassadors, I'll stick him on a pirate base that I'm spying on, and he'll he'll uh, help uh, our espionage uh, efforts. 
unfortunately I don't have that option yet. So I think for now I'm just going to put them on. I'm just going to put them on mana boo. No, nope, I'll just leave them here for now. Uh, we should get up to mana boo soon here. Assuming that's mana boo. Yep. yep. That would be mana boo. Um, that's a storied location. That's why I know it's there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, good at doing your job, staying hidden. Not good at my job. Yep. Or good at staying hidden, but not good at your job. <laughs> I lived. I lived. <laughs> yeah, that's unusual in my games. But as you can see, I send my spies for pretty risky missions. So I was kind of hoping we'd have an easier uh, pirate to spy like a few more pirates too by the way that's not nearly enough more aggression please <laughs> they'll get it a gravelex oh no dirty space creatures they are oh that's another one where's our ship oh of course right by uh there is a planet in here it's already scanned so i guess we'll move on you are automated so here's something you can do too. <clears throat> you're worried about something that's automated, not necessarily an exploration ship, but say a mining ship. You want him to run. He's not got the run order yet. He hasn't been attacked yet. Uh, what you can do on an automated ship, this will probably work here. Okay. If I change his retreat when from when attack to at same location, he immediately escapes. So you can do this with the mining, mining ship if you don't want to get destroyed. And then just turn it back to when attacked when you're done. And I didn't touch the automation at all. He's still automated. So that's one way you can get an automated ship to run. If you want it to get out of the way. And a little tip from Monty. 77% <clears throat> in boarding. Excellent. Okay, science is almost funded. We got a 50-50 split going here. Like I said, I want to want to keep our yeah 4.7 now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wait till we start scouring and making breeding worlds. I think by then our home world is going to be full, so it's not going to make much of a difference on our home world. But the any uh, new colonies and that will grow like mad. Uh, on a scale between Kelter and, Ar and an Artilus, how bad is it a Gravelix? It's kind of like the old, I guess, not really. Um, I guess, yeah, it's more like a, a what, what are those space corp lobsters or Keltors, yeah. So Gravelix are kind of like Keltors. Border cars are more like, uh, yeah, I guess another Keltor. But then Artilus is still in the game. There's no Silver Mist in this, at least not yet. I don't know whether they plan to do that or not this time. I think the art, uh, the Silver Mist <clears throat> was a contest, if I remember correctly. They held a contest for a new threat in the game. And I think the Silver Mist idea won. It's the reason that's in the game. There's a water car right there. Let's go have a look at one of those. Yeah, both of these are kind of on the level of like the um, the Kelters. And then the Artilus is a thing of its own, just like it was in the uh, universe. Yeah, border cars seem to uh, be large uh, silicon-based organism that can spy in the air, this vacuum of space. And they appear to uh, feed on metallic minerals found in asteroids, but will happily chomp on a ship. Where's our explorer? He's usually right down the throat when I get this uh, message, but... Uh, I can just get you to move on somewhere, or are you done in here? Nope, we'll get that. I think... So once I move away from this location, scan that out, I should be able to come back, hit the star, and he should just finish up in here. Oh! Aliens who speak! Uh, let's see, there's Manabu. Okay, so we are receiving a message from the aliens on Manabu. They speak our language. We'll listen to what they have to say and weigh the merits of their words before we decide if we want to eat them. I think we already decided if we want to eat them. 
And there's an independent calling of Tekans encountered at Manabu. Invade and take over the calling by landing troops, blah, blah, blah. Initial communications have been moderately successful. Delusion little things, aren't they? They think they're safe. <laughs> yeah, we want to be friends with you. I will leave them on, in oops, leave them on invasion, but... Uh... Yeah, they don't mind us at all. That's about to change. <laughs> okay, so research projects are available, blah, blah, blah. Dismiss that. And looks like we're under attack again. Nope. Oh, yes. Uh, is that a friendly? Gotta get used to what the pirate flags are in this game. Uh, that is not a friendly. That's a friendly. So the inverted triangle is our friend, okay. So we have to go attack them, of course. Uh, aliens who speak. Oh, okay. Greetings, travelers. We are the Tekans. We welcome you as partners in trade. We are glad you're here because we need your help. We established a base in your home system, so we need to learn more about you in order to pave the way for beneficial trade relationships. Unfortunately, we lost contact with our researchers. Do you know anything about that? Not a thing. <coughs> Don't mind the fur stuck in our mandibles. <laughs> An important decision. Uh, the circumstances are they were delicious, but it may be wise not to mention this. Uh, we shall uh, have to decide uh, how to handle these creatures. Should we lie to them and intimidate them by boasting our, our conquest? Yeah, we're pretty arrogant, right? So we should probably boast about our conquest. However, we are deceitful, so we could lie to them. Hmm. I'm going to lie to them. We are tricky. We lied to the foolish man and said what a terrible, that a terrible disease afflicted their outpost. We did our best to save them, but the disease was too stupid to respond to our excellent medications. It's a shame. One of the babies died in our arms. It was very sad. There was much weeping on our home world. To console, our, to console ourselves, we claimed the research station and used it to further our own growth. Any rumors of us eating the alien corpses is highly exaggerated. Just don't believe don't believe what you hear. We didn't do that. And shipboarding's done. Excellent. So, uh, I guess you'll finish dealing with this. Okay, they're coming at the spaceport. Um, we'll finish this first, and then we'll maybe look at uh, getting them upgraded. And they're still talking. All right. Well, I won't zoom back over there, but we are receiving another transmission from Manabu. Thank you for your report. We grieve the loss, our, uh, the loss of our scientists, but we appreciate your efforts to save them. We'll have to work on our understanding of your language, because our translation makes you sound a little irrational. But we're, we believe that's our fault. As a demonstration of our goodwill, our scientists are, uh, will share with you some of our recently acquired knowledge. You might wish to know that other travelers have reported, sight uh, reported sightings of, your, of aliens who resemble your species, but they are described as incapable of communications. They have been called mindless devourers. We wish to warn you lest you run into them. Well. Kill him. Man, it needs fuel. You big chicken. Doesn't want to wait around for us to kill him. Interesting words. Mindless devourers? In what way do they resemble us? We are very thoughtful and deliberate devourers. I'll have you know. Even so, there's much we don't know about who they were, who we were before the cataclysm. Creatures that resemble Gazerians might provide an important link to our past, and that may help us understand our true nature. Good point. Tasty. Can we eat them? We're getting to that. <laughs> okay, so they're gone. Uh, there's nothing around so around homeworld. They're talking again. Yap, yap, yap. Man. Oh! Look, they want money. Let's see what they want. So they're talking again. We've seen another transmission from Man Manabu. Uh, these aliens are very chatty, I'm noticing. 
Uh, there's one more thing we wish to discuss. Long ago, one of our research vessels discovered an alien in cryosuspension. We did not recognize the species or what to do with it, but now that we've seen that, that this is a Gazurian. After encountering you, we awaken the sleeper who is indeed a Gazurian from a long time ago. A scientist, in fact. We are willing to return him to you for a very low cost, just to cover our storage and resuscitation costs, you understand. So, we spawn scientists much less frequency, frequently. Uh, scientists, def scientists will definitely be handy. Um, yeah, we're almost funded, so yeah. Um, a little over a year to get a level double one uh, research. I think that's pretty good for a Gazurian, isn't it? And that's not rushing it or anything. Uh, do we have any? Um, okay, anyways, we'll finish with this. <laughs> so we can uh, either decline the offer or pay 20 grand. I'm thinking we need a scientist. So I'm thinking I'm going to invest 20 grand because we do spawn them much less frequently. Much less frequently. Yeah, I don't remember seeing too many more uh, playing these guys. So I'm going to grab them for 20 grand. It's going to slip us into the negatives for a minute. Uh, we are starting to build out uh, some more bases. Uh, neither one of those are down, so we get about 10 or 12 grand coming right away. So that'll probably pull us back out of the hole. So I think we're in a good good shape to actually afford this for the moment. This is interesting. A scientist from the past could be a great value. We paid these shifting mammals a ransom. We're receiving more information from them now. I'm guessing another pop-up. <laughs> Ah, uh, tasty. Can we eat them? And the oh, that's my bot. Okay, so um, pause. We'll finish up with the Tekans and we'll do our retrofit. I guess we'll move these guys back over to the spaceport. You got to go there for retrofit, anyways. And this is interesting. Uh, we're sending you your scientist now, he's a bit special. Yeah, let's call him special. But he's a very intelligent scientist, so good luck to you, friends. I hope we can do business again soon. Now, I believe there's a bit of a delay before it actually shows up. It's not showing up yet. So we can go put some boarding pods on our escorts now, which is awesome. And we're now working on improved deflectors, which is going to help our little fleet here. Okay, and this is interesting. The scientists the aliens have handed over is rational. It comes from a lineage long ago, from a time the Gazarians knew uh, far more about the. the hang on. It comes from a time long ago, from a time when Gazarians knew far more than and were spread out across the galaxy. That knowledge should prove very useful, but there are some problems. The scientist has difficulty of talking about his time. He mostly rants about the lack of voices in his head. We wish we could communicate more clearly, but he only says words are insufficient and were once not unnecessary. But no one likes working with this scientist, even so, he's very clever. Okay. Uh, did he show up yet? Yes, there he is. Okay, let's pause for a sec. Okay. Uh, let's see. Who haven't we used yet? Uh, well, we've used Magbag for a system name, but let's tell you what. Let's maybe... We'll call you Leaf Season. How's that? Call them Science of the Leaf Season. And I hate to say it, but you've been with the Tekans too long. You, you got this kind of odor to you. Tekans do smell, and we, we're kind of getting that off you. So I'm thinking we'll just, I don't know, send you over to the Smelly Labs. You, you're used to the Tekan smell. You've been with them for a while, so I think you're more suited to sit over there. So we can transfer you to the Smelly Labs. Yep. Stations, closed. You can't get the smell out, so off you go. <laughs> okay, anyways, uh, yes. Shipboarding. Let's upgrade our laser guardians. Defender 1 to Defender 3. Upgrade you. Now, these guys probably still aren't going anywhere yet, but uh, Defender 3, actually. And still going to be a laser guardian. And I think that's all still fine, except we want an assault pod. 
Bit of a problem though. These assault pods require a crew of 15. We just overshot our crew by two. So we need to find out what we can lose a short range, short range sensor array. Um, uh, does armor require crew? One, one crew. So that's not going to help us. Um, don't want to go without deflectors either. That's a little bit of countermeasures and targeting gone. If I take that off, where is that? Yeah, I'll lose. Uh, we'll be back to, I think, what did they just give you? 2% countermeasures. So basically, we're back to 10, 10 and 10, 10 and 20 on countermeasures and targeting. 10 counter, or 10 targeting, 20 countermeasures. Probably not a big deal. We are underpowered too, as you can see. We're not going to go very fast on our hyperdrives, but we can still go just as fast as a warp bubble. So we're still in the game. <laughs> and we can go 226 uh, M, which is kind of what to shoot for at the beginning. So we're not in that bad of shape, even though we're underpowered. That's awesome. I usually have a much worse time with these. Uh, we're still going 75. What it could do also, directional thrusters give us a countermeasure of 5%. And it allows us to spin a bit quicker. We kind of need that. However, I don't think I have room for it. Because I still got to lose it. Okay, let's pull that off for now. Directional thrusters have a crew of carmen too. I don't have any space left on this. There's only eight spaces here. I could kill our fuel range, maybe. That would bring us down to one something. Let's just see what that does. Yeah, 144. I could probably live that, that with that for now. So if I put another crew on, put that sensor back on. And maybe work with our directional thrust thrusters as well. We're going 75, so I could actually lose an engine and go with a thruster. So go 63, a bit slower, but we do get more countermeasures. So we get 2% from putting the sensors back on, and we get 5 from putting the directional on. And we can spin a bit quicker because we only got the 180 arcs to work with here. So if we need to shoot for at something behind us, we can spin a bit quicker to do that. I think that'll be fine. It's not a laser guardian anymore. It's a laser border. So we're going to be a little slow on the hyperdrive, a little uh, lean on the on the range, but this will work. Drop a fuel cell and maybe just stick a fuel tender on the fleet. You can say, oh, yeah, I don't have uh, fuel ships yet. And besides, I'm probably not going very far with these. We're going to be pinned in our system fighting fires for a bit. I think there's not very many of them showing up, which is disturbing me a bit. She's a little more, uh, a little more intense than this. So we'll save that. I'm sure they're coming. There will be a couple more yet. So, and in fact... <laughs> When I'm in the middle of retrofitting this, that's when a bunch of them are going to show up every time, I tell you. So let's retrofit them quickly. Is there anything in the way? No. Nope. Ah, yeah, it just... Oh, that's one of my escorts. I thought maybe they stuck a freighter in there, but... Nope, here come our escorts now. Looks like a fairly quick upgrade. It's 11 or 12%, so that shouldn't take too long. All right. Uh, what else is going on out here? I need to slow down and maybe reassess a few things. Hey, we're fully funded on research. Oh, we might as well throw a little extra into growth then. Look at that, 5.4. Oh, 5.2. Not bad. Yeah, we do get fuel tankers later, so that range probably isn't going to even... Not for much. And we'll have uh, various other fuel sites around. So up here we can refuel. Now the only problem with Indies now that they reworked the pirates is there's always pirates around the Indies. These are not valuable fuel points for uh, ships. So the pirates are always refueling at these places. 
So there's always pirate like these little guys here are probably gonna go and get in trouble. Huh? How come you're going so slow? You're out of fuel. Ah, I forgot to build that fuel earlier. It's probably just going down now, yeah. So I don't have a fuel source. So that's hurting us a little bit. Uh, carbonite, we do have a source. Yeah, I forgot the fuel. That's kind of tripped me up a bit. Ah, uh, another luxury. 3% colony growth and happiness. Thank you. Colony defense from ice network. Well, we don't live on ice plants. Not anything for us. And we're under attack again. Okay, what are you doing? Nothing. Why are you doing nothing? Okay. Let's get you doing something like capture. We have capture ability. Go get them. <laughs> uh, I guess they're in a cohesive enough. I kind of need all these pods. To happen. And they're going for fuel. Probably not going to catch this one. But we are ready to capture now. Perfect. Yeah, he's gone. So, you guys go guard that for the moment. And we'll put you on a defend order. And that should be good. Oh, where's that? Well, that was the one that homeworld that they were attacking. Agent captured Diamond! Oops! I uh, found a couple more luxuries. We got 6% colony development and 1% colony income. And uh, Ruzo's an enemy, 5% calling development. Awesome. Sinister Rock Horde has her diamond. All right. That was fun. <laughs> I didn't even get to see what kind of traits you're going to get. They're two for two. <laughs> uh, uh, you're done. You can go retrofit and automate. Don't oh, automate. In fact, I might build some more of these. Get a bit of money. Vanthia root, 6% calling development, 2 population growth. Yeah, we'll rush that, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, it's all our money, maybe not. Actually, I meant to open up to more than one lab here. Okay, tell you what, let's uh, queue up some more research. So I'm going to run with three labs for a minute. Um, Proton, better engines, of course. That's definitely a no-brainer. Better power, too. A couple of no-brainers. Uh, which works for me because, well, no brain, right? <laughs> uh, there. Okay, we have special hive fangers. Which we should probably build. Um, now, our frigates, I believe, have hangar abilities. Yes, so we can have a hangar on our frigates. So we can put these on our ships, too. Uh, basically, what I want these for is our early bases. They don't do anything against pirates, but if a Gravelix walks up to our station between the fighters and the missiles, that we can usually save the station. Otherwise, it's lunch for the Gravelix. So these are handy for that. Um, do I worry about it right now? Maybe put that off a bit for something else. Crew systems. Yeah, we got these super tiny escorts. And even the improved escorts are only uh, nine general slots. So being able to pull a crew system off is going to be super important. So I'm going to queue that one up too. Might as well grab storage while we're at it. I, I, I think our range is actually fine. But storage, though. Go from 800 to 1100. That's actually a good increase. I kind of need the storage. For our mining ships and stuff. Probably not a huge priority now. Oh, let's just throw the starfighters in. So she get up to point depends on weaponry. Let's 
Expanded civilians would be handy too for our fuel ships that we were just talking about. Bigger mining ships. And our colony ship. Planetary governance. Yeah, that's a good one. It's going to be 22 years. I'll queue it up. Because I always tend to forget about it. So I'll put it in the queue so I don't forget about it. But I'll leave it at the bottom for now. There's our there's our hex armor, so we can get that fairly quickly too. Basically, what I want to do is start capturing ships and ripping them apart, so we can you know pick it on this tech a bit. So I don't really want to actually research some of the stuff because I know it's probably going to come through uh, repairs and disassemblies through our waste nothing uh, attribute. I'll we'll go with that for now. Like I said, I don't want to go too far into the queue. That one is probably pretty expensive. Yeah, two thousand. 200 steel, so 50 polymer, so a bunch of resources just got used up here. Yeah, we're kind of short on carbonate a bit. Yet. Everything else is looking good. Got three luxuries at home now. I have 71%. Oh, we are way funded now. Excellent. We're fully funded. Look at that. 514 left over. And we are under attack at home. I think. Yep. First fleet, capture. Yes, capture me a fleet destroyer. That would be awesome. Let's see if we can do this. I should check on a couple things here. Okay, tanks are all looking good. Memory's good. Yep, we're good. All right. Oh, you chicken! I'm not gonna capture this one either. Immediately runs the minute I fire on the stupid thing. So this station scared it off on us. Thanks. Uh, come on. Oh, I'm not in this window. That's fine. There we go. I didn't hit any hotkeys. It's over in the OBS window. Make sure I didn't cut anything off. Good. Oh. Got two pirates fighting each other. Oh, scrape. <laughs> the fleet destroyers go head to head. Or is that a frigate? Oh, there are two fleet destroyers going at it. All right, well, at least they're evacuated. Maybe we can get one of them. Which one has less shields? And let's just double check that we're not going after a pirate. Oh, it's these two here. Make sure we're not going after a friendly. Nope. So which one has less shields? We'll go after that one. This one's probably going to run in a minute. Okay, so going to grab our first fleet. I am going to say capture this one. It's probably going to run in a minute, I would think. It's taking on quite a bit of uh, damage here. Yeah, he's escaping. Okay, shields are down. Look, why aren't you boarding? Huh? Oh, no. I think we shot our pods at something else. Yeah, these guys have no pods left. They must have unloaded them somewhere else. I gotta attack it. Well, attack it then. Unavailable. Unavailable, yeah. We must have shot our pods at something else before we come over here. Anyway, so gonna get that gone, maybe. Okay, boom. I really wanted that ship. Yeah, they must have shot the pods at that other ship. Uh, did we capture anything? 
actually. So if we shot pods, did we capture anything? I doubt it. Or I think pods come with boarding already when you build the ship or when you build the component, right? I don't have to generate them first. Oh, the average gamer exposed himself. <laughs> yep. While failing to steal. You probably shouldn't have exposed yourself. That probably was an indication something was wrong. <laughs> hmm. Okay, uh, so you're going to go guard. We'll put you back on a defend order. And we'll go have a look at the A average gamer. And just still concealment, eh? I guess he failed, so he didn't get any progress on anything. And what were you after? Transport systems. Wow, I'm not, my spy game isn't going very well here. Ugh. 50 50 chance flip a coin <laughs> yeah this game this spy game looks like it's going to kind of suck this time around yeah spy games are different every game too like sometimes you do really well at spying other times you can't keep a spy to save your life right or to save my viewers lives <laughs> whichever way you want to look at it uh these guys are still going construction should probably come to a complete all i need to i think i need to just retrofit and automate this i'm not staying on top of it enough and we will build one more yeah i'll just automate this because i am forgetting to do it so automate it and then they'll just ask us what to do next i'll just run like that i won't go through and queue a bunch of stuff up yet of course, can't go anywhere anyways. So the retrofitted, they, they still got the skip drives, I think. All right. Uh, yeah, I do want to build some more explorers. And coming in for some retrofit. And what do we know? Anything else? Still standard, still don't know who that is. Do we know where any pirates are yet? Nope. Yeah, if I can find these guys, if I can find their base, I'll stick my uh, admit, um, ambassador on there and then we'll start uh, getting better chances at our spying. So apparently I need to supplement that somehow. Ah. Transports, eat those Tekans, yes. Um, again, better fording assault and everything. Um, that doesn't help with invasions, no. I gotta build troops first before I worry about transport, so maybe, uh, I need money. Uh, maybe we'll, uh, start building some troops out a bit, and we'll get that, uh, research done. Yeah, I've only got four troops on the ground, so. Uh, we'll look at building those out. Shock forces would probably be handy too. Oh, playing with the Growlix, are we? Of course you are. Let's go get that. Actually, you're at a field. No, you're not at a field. Oh, you're a. Oh, you're a surveyor three. Okay, you should be automated, anyways. Uh, I should just ignore these. Those guys. They went to explorer school. They should know what they're doing. So I think from now on, I'll just ignore those uh, exploration talks. And the mining station's under attack again. And what is our fleet doing? Capture, do you have pods? You do have pods. Perfect. And what are you after? That ship right there. Perfect. I need fuel, you chicken. You chicken. That's that. Ah, a map deal. Okay, good. So, let's give us a map. And it was Adula. I'm not sure. Adula is way up here. So, that's not colored at all. So, that really doesn't tell me a whole lot more. I'm guessing that's probably our close by Tekken, I would think. That we set up. 
5% calling development and calling happiness from drinking some Dakari Nail. And 3% calling development from slamming back the Kasadi. Bars open. Uh, ooh, we're at four and a half hours. Doesn't feel like it. Anybody left? <laughs> There's a new construction ship. Excellent. And we have a bit of money, so maybe I'll just pop one more troop down. Did that spawn sp uh, Swarm Lord? No. I'm um, hoping we get it soon. Uh, maybe I'll try one more. Nope. Luck's not on my side today. Try again in a bit. Build a couple more. Um, sure. I think the private sector is probably doing pretty good. Oh, hell yeah. 55 grand at this point in the game. That's actually a decade in. <laughs> I still took four and a half hours to go a decade in the game. Same as last Sunday. I was trying to, I was trying to be a little quicker at this, but. Yeah, see, the uh, the little miners and freighters are getting attacked up here because pirates are kind of hanging out. Quite a few pirates are hanging out. Yeah, they're all coming in here for fuel, so Indies are actually very dangerous locations now. Just because of the pirate levels in there. Uh, you want to build some pedantic route. Sure. Pedanthia route. And you're doing asteroids, you might as well go retrofit. Go get your asteroid scanner. And I don't know what you're doing. Or you, so carry on. Got two left that are uh, on uh, manual. Perfection requires patience. Yeah, I don't know where the perfection is, but I guess I got patience. Yeah, this, these aren't perfect builds at build outs at all. <laughs> There's many ways you can do this. I'm not saying this is the perfect way. I'm not saying it's the worst way either, so it's just the way I play it. So by having stuff, uh, like basically, uh, I'm not this far advanced on the uh, hyperdrives or anything, but at this point, I usually do put at least one construction ship on automation because quite often, oh, there's a mining station that needs to be repaired. Don't, didn't even notice that needed to be done, right? So. Having at least one construction ship on auto is uh, actually a good thing. And if there's nothing to repair, he'll just ask, do you want this mining station built? So regardless, it's always good to have at least one construction ship uh, on auto, even if you wanted to uh, manually control them. Got a little bit of money. We should maybe spend a bit of that on something. Um, Sure what? I guess we could get some more explorers. Three grand a piece, basically. Yeah, grab a couple. And we'll just leave them automated. That's fine. Oh, we found some drilling ports. So that's another uh, uh, strategic that we need to, to dig out. Ah, Leaf Season says, I gotta go. Uh, be seeing you. Okay, well, thanks for stopping by. That was awesome. Uh, we got our star renamed to your mag, mag bag. So you'll be mag bag forever here. So have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. And we might be here a little later. I don't know. <laughs> or a lot later. I don't know. I'm probably good for at least a couple more hours here. And you're being built. I'm just going to automate these last two, and when they're done, they'll go retrofit and do what they need to do. So, exploration is officially off my hands now. So, that's one thing I turn over to the AI fairly early, is once I get my immediate surroundings done, just automate them. Yeah. Yeah, we got to get over to Manabu. Uh, so we're going to need troops for that. 
I'm not going to worry about colonizing. I'll just invade, scour, and eat. <laughs> and you want to build a the Duralium Quartz. So you probably don't really need that right away, but... Yeah, sure. Like I said, this is a normal start game, so it's a little more relaxed than like a trying start. Uh, I guess that went away. Uh, where's our north? Yeah, I gotta. I keep forgetting to teach myself to look at these alerts from the top down. Because a lot of times they go from the bottom up. And by the time I get to the one at the top, it's timed out and it doesn't apply anymore. So I gotta make sure I could come from the top down. Good, good advice for anybody, I guess. Alright, it's going to take me a while to stop looking at that, I guess. Yeah, fully funded. 1500 of the good. So I could just say, okay, well, let's just go with a 60-40 split. And everything's funded. It's fine. How's our growth rate? 5.7. Right, three grand a decade in. So we've got a billion people since we started the game. Awesome. But yeah, maybe we should get to the, yeah, I should get uh, troop stuff happening in a bit here. Uh, let's see if we can push out a swarm lord here. That's a scientist, this guy. Uh, oh, not doing anything. I have no money. Eh. The average gamer has been detected after successfully carrying out their mission to steal basic research on basic transports. Still no, uh, oops, uh, still, ooh, so I captured a ship. Uh, still no uh, espionage skill, which is a little disturbing. She'd spawn something. Back for transports at 45%. My god, those are horrible odds. Now, if I was a Diute, if I was the Diute, I'd be getting bonuses for completing these risky missions, but we're not Diute, so. There's a new explorer, and. Oh, no, ah, I thought we took a ship. They took a ship. We took one of our little uh, freighters. I thought we caught a ship. It wasn't us. Mr. Roboto, I think normal game speed, it takes 10 minutes per year. Oh, I, I never really thought about that, but... <laughs> We're not doing very well, then. Uh, calling development, uh, yeah, let's maybe grab a couple more luxuries. That's going to help us out. Ten minutes a year? Is that a 4x speed or regular speed? Normal game speed, ten minutes a year. Well, I should have been done this, uh, like, yonks ago. <laughs> uh, oh. Capture. Hurry up before something takes that single shot at that and makes it go for fuel. Ah, uh, he went to explore school. He knows what he's doing. I'm not going to run off and look at those anymore. If it gets destroyed, we'll build another one. Oh, he's going to refuel again. Hmm. Hyper Deny would be super handy right now. At least maybe we can get some boarding pods on it before he takes off. No, nope, too late. Uh, is there somebody else here? So I'm going to grab that fleet, issue a guard order once more, get him back over the spaceport, and grab our north. So there is some merit to putting, like, a missile on your freighters and stuff. Because if you notice here, you got all these little guys sitting around, right? If each one of these had one little missile on them, right, that's a lot of missiles suddenly. As they're as they're jumping out, they'd be firing the missiles. I can see uh I can see maybe putting missiles on these to be handy. Because they sit around in little groups like this. So I might be doing that. Uh so you're like 60 straight at a time pause. Yeah, no doubt. I spend a lot of time paused. Even when I don't know I'm paused.
But again, this is a slower way to play the game, and I'm just trying to show that off. And yeah, it takes time, I guess. Oh, a new admiral. Uh, should I just stick him right on our first fleet? If I put him on the first fleet, he might get boarding assault bonuses. I think I'm gonna do that. First strike force. Uh, now we have some. Do we have anybody who needs to be named? I think so. Yeah, our ambassador and our admiral. I don't know if we have new names yet. Uh, we have Mr. Roboto. We'll we get Mr. Roboto to be our ambassador. And then our Admiral, do, 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 who haven't they used yet to do, 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 do. Uh, who got caught? Oh, Diamond. Ty Diamond, how would you like to be an Admiral this time? If we get the spy back, we'll, I don't know. Figure something out. So you're an Admiral now. And you, that guy's, I not do that? Yeah, I'm going to send you out to the first fleet and hopefully you get some boarding defense strength or uh, traits or boarding assault traits. That will make that a little better. Uh, we do have zero G coming, which is going to make our uh, boarding assault a bit better. And I sure hope we get some money again soon here. Oh, we got a lab to put down. I forgot about that. I think I hit the button too, didn't I? Oops, that should have went down a while ago. Yay, more research. Which will need to be funded, but I think we're fine. Small freighter. Here comes our fleet. Want to capture orders, so they got pods again. I don't think they got a chance to shoot them last time. Uh, build another fabricator. How many do we have? I guess so. We are coming up to a fleet destroyer this time. Let's see how we make out. Shooting at our mining station. Two more luxuries? Yeah, all of us sign that. It even doesn't even know where it is. It doesn't matter where it is now because we have Jerry's hyperdrives. Normally I go out and make sure that the build isn't going to be too far away. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, go, go, go. Go, go, go. Get him, get him. Get on board. There we go. Oh, yeah. Gonna get us a fleet destroyer. It's gonna take a minute, but we're gonna get one. Uh, I think that's the only ship in the area right now. So we're about to board our first ship. It's going to take a minute, though. Okay, well, we'll go look at other stuff then. Uh, funding looks good. I could almost automate this. Once I get to a good cash flow and the 10% doesn't make any difference, then I just automate this whole process as well. But uh, for now, I think I'll hold on to it a bit longer. We got just enough cash flow to cover the 10% here. So it's still a little close for my liking. Once we overshoot it by, you know, quite a few grand, then I'll just automate the whole process. And I'll never have to look at it again. Not unless something goes wrong. We've disabled a lot of stuff here. We've disabled their uh, pod, salt pod, but it's coming back in two seconds. So they're just continuing on there disabling stuff. Yeah, a lot of the most stuff is disabled right now. And we found some Jacanta Ivory, 7% calling development, nice. And some Noriak eggs, 3% calling development, 1% growth. Now it's either Norjak, Noriak, or Norhak, depending on what, <laughs> what uh, language you're speaking, I think. J is a funny letter, isn't it? Neither be a Y, an H, or a G. <laughs> Aha, there we go. We got it. One fleet destroyer in our possession. 
What do you got? Lance missiles. Sentinel point of uh, uh, beam point defense and rail guns. Covidian shields, heavy armor. Uh, warp bubbles. Ugh. Who's using warp bubbles anymore? We got Jerex. What the hell is this? So that's actually quite a bit of firepower. Do I really want to disassemble that right away? It's going to take a minute to disassemble the two. It's 650 in size. So that's going to plug up one of our spaceports with our shipyards, which probably isn't a big deal. Um, or I could just add it to our fleet. Uh, you had to have salt pods, right? So he does have assault pods. Now, the only problem with this having an assault fleet is if you have like your lead ship and it doesn't have an assault pod, that whole fleet will get just attack orders. They'll just want to attack. They don't consider the other ships that have boarding capabilities. So if you see that happening and they're never looking to capture anything, even though you got the preparation set to auto, just take that one ship out. And if everybody in the sh uh, fleet has a, uh, pods, then you're good to go. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, what do I want to do with this? I think for the moment, I'm just going to actually add it to our first fleet. For now. And I might even make you the lead ship. Because you've got better shields than the rest of my ships. And then what we can do is we can go over to our Admiral. who should be on there now. So first strike force from Mag Bag Triumph, which is a one of our little escorts. So if you just reassign them back to the same fleet, the first fleet, you go transfer, boom. He transfers ships to the lead ship again. So now he's on the ship. So that's a nice protected ship. Uh, we need to get it refueled, though. Uh, oh, and repaired. Oh, I got to build a piece of armor back. Okay, that's fine. And he's going to the planet to do that. Do we really want that to happen? I guess so. It doesn't really matter. Just a quick repair. Did I hear a shock go off? And nobody here. Oh, it might have been just a warp drive uh, firing up or something. Excellent. Got our first ship. Use the Kazarian bonuses to dismantle it. Yeah. Um... Construction ship. Well, what I can do, we get that bonus for repairing too, eh? So what I can do is repair it, maybe get a bonus, send it right back in for disassembly, get another bonus. Uh, carbonite and Bacala crystals, sure. Like I said, I got Jarek's drive, so I'm really not concerned on where the stuff is. Our private sector should be a good range here. That's a cargo 3000 with max fuel. I think we're fine. I think we can just build anywhere. And be okay. I think. <clears throat> My hope is that they'll bring more ships, and it looks like they did. Uh, bring some of the little escorts in so we can capture those. Oh, oops. oh you're not doing anything because this guy's got a repair order. Okay, I'm just going to pull him out. We'll create a new fleet. Uh, pull them out, create a new fleet, and I'll just call this lost and found. Yeah, they're sitting there waiting for him to actually repair, which I'm enjoying too much. Lost, found, lost, and found. There. So he's in his own sh fleet, and you have no mission. You should pick up a mission to go attack that. But in case you don't, I'm going to issue you a capture order in case. And, uh, where's that other one? This one here. Uh, go repair. Ah, uh, grab those two luxuries, eh? Just out of curiosity, whereabouts is that? Yeah, that's fine. I'm pretty sure most of that will be in range. I don't really need to run out and look. I do need to maybe check and make sure we got all our strategics before I start picking out on luxuries. Yep, we got them all. Uh, we could uh, double up our sources, though. One, two, three, four, five luxuries now. 85% and growing. So we're growing again. Yeah, 35% from resources now. 
Ooh. <laughs> Wouldn't that suck if that got <laughs> got a bad research breakthrough on this one? It's got like 14 days left, 1% left. Could you imagine? Cost me 164 to lock it in. There we go. Call me paranoid. Go ahead, call me paranoid. <laughs> All right, how are we going to make out here? So this is a little escort. This one I'd be interested in disassembling right away, I think. Yeah, it's got a rail gun on it. There we go. All right, got it. Oh, breakthrough. Critical breakthrough. At the Mag Bag Smelly Labs. Leaf season. Awesome. Breakthrough in research and proton ionization. How much of that did we get? I spent money on that too, didn't I? Or did that rush it? Hang on. No, got a critical breakthrough. Right, right. Got it. Uh, okay, good. Yes. And deflectors are done. So our ships are a little bit better now. So she'll, she'll be building a bit more. Yep. Excellent. So this one I'm going to send for immediate disassembly, I think. After I repair it. Uh, did we get a... Did we finish that repair? Or is that other fleet? He must still be in the queue. Oh, where is he? I thought he was going to the planet. No, oh, he went to the spaceport. Okay, he's in the spaceport somewhere. Or heading to it, anyway. Aha! Captured! Dismiss! Pause! And there it is. Uh, do you need repair? I think you need repair. Repair? No, I'm just going to get a refuel order. Okay, well, forget the refuel order. You are going to go straight into my spade port and retire. Off you go. Thanks for being nice and close to it, too, by the way. No travel time, considering you're out of fuel. Okay, found nothing there. Discovery at Wretched End. 20% scenery from Impressive Event Horizon. Well, we're not worried about scenery yet, so I don't need to run off and go look at that. And exploration ship. He went to explore school. He knows what he's doing. Disassemble. Yeah, a couple more of those escorts would be cool. Would be awesome. Uh, what did you have on you, actually? You have a Jerex. Ion shield. So there's some advanced tech on this, for sure. The Burning Rock wants to sell some out. Sure, why not? What did you give us? Edan, or Endan. What's is that? Have you revealed any more colors? Nope. And we've got more stuff going on here. What's going on? Ooh, another big, another big destroyer. Yep. Okay. Uh, do we have pods? Have we regenerated those, first of all? No. Damn. Wasted all our pods on an escort. I wonder if they'll regenerate in the time that we attack this thing. Oh. Yes. Okay, salt pods are back, but he's running. I don't know whether they're going to be able to do that. No, you have got to take the shields down yet. So that's not happening. All right, off you go. That's the only ship in here right now. Yeah. So I'm going to bring you back here. I'm going to hit you with a guard order. And this other fleet that I got that ship in. Are you repaired? No, there you're retiring. Where's that other ship right here? He's off. Still in for repair. Once he's repaired, I'm going to re put him back in the first fleet. Um, it's just that fleet wasn't going to do anything. Well, that one ship had a repair order, apparently. And once again, that's actually timed out. Hey, we got transport systems. The average gamer pulled it off. Awesome. Still don't have an espionage skill. I need that to spawn so we can get better success rates here. I'm quite nervous sending him out on like 40% 40, 40 missions here. 
Space Commerce, go for it. Welcome to Monty Spy Academy. <laughs> Onward. Yes, uh, so we should be getting a waste nothing bonus here soon. Uh, I still got a uh, uh, shipyard free for this repair, too. He's just out of fuel as well. Do we have fuel here yet? Yep. So fuel's flowing. Good. Uh, Hexadorium we got a source out yet, but everything else looks pretty good. Waste nothing! Even when, yeah, we waste nothing, even when scrapping old ships and bases. Thus, we have made a research breakthrough in proton ionization. The thing we had rushed earlier. Awesome. So we got better engines out of it. Excellent. Oh, where are you? Man, that's moving slow. Now there's another ship in the way. Oh well, that's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Now, finances. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, uh, I think pretty soon I'll just be able to automate all this. That's what I'm thinking. 94 now. Static at 94. And these luxuries, we consume 25% uh, uh, slower. So there's one in critical, so hopefully get some of that thing in before it uh, runs out. Now, if that runs out, this is going to drop by 5%. So that's how important it is to keep luxuries here. Uh, when you run out, you lose 5% in development, your money drops. Awesome, we're doing fantastic here. Hey, he went to Explorer School, he knows what he's doing. Now, did he get repaired? No, he's in the queue now. So that small freighter is just about done. Okay, now. He's 98%. Now, do we... Yes? No? I was just going to say, do we get a waste nothing from repairing that? We discovered the stone archives, ancient ruins from the lost civilization. Uh, take me to it. This is that. You are there. Okay. Investigate. An old ship. On the surface of um, Hyagost, we discovered the wreckage of an ancient Gazarian ship, likely dating back before the Cataclysm. It is surely worth studying, although we could also salvage it for resources. Well, let's study it. Why not? Things go wrong in space. Scientists have begun their study of the crashed Gazarian ship on uh, Hyagost. Uh, the first, uh, we were quite pleased to learn about ancient Gazarian cleverness, but then things took a dark turn. The scientists began sending shrill, discordant, nonsensical messages. Then they stopped responding to our efforts to communicate. That usually indicates something has gone wrong. <laughs> we must now decide if we want to cut our losses or send another team. I'm going to send another team. Now, these aren't when they talk about scientists, these aren't our character scientists, just a crew of, yeah, crew of scientists. So we're going to send another team, so we're not wasting scientists doing this, just to be clear. Ah, better scientists! Gazirans are not quitters. We are sent... Oh, we sent another team of scientists. Better ones this time. We're confident nothing will go wrong. Let's see about that. We will see. Have we met anyone else yet? Uh, we got a color over here. I'm guessing it's our Tekans. Oh, we made a mistake. <clears throat> uh, yeah, there's a... Good outcome and a bad outcome to this. We just got the bad one. So something went wrong. Uh, we discovered what happened to the original team investigating the ancient ship. They were exposed to a plague, a psychic plague. They were unable to contain the infected who felt an irresponsible or irrepressible urge to return to our home world. We were unable to stop them. There is now an outbreak on our home world, and the disease threatens to spread rapidly throughout our population. We must take steps to uh, cure this as soon as possible. So let's have a look at our home world. Yeah, there it is. This is the Shakturi psionic virus, Delta variant. 
So this is a virus that was manufactured to, uh, to clutter the minds of hive mind uh, beings, like Shakturi and that. I think it uh, severs the uh, connection. This is not good for us. This is, this is going to uh, hurt us a lot. First thing, <laughs> we get uh, minus 10 uh, ha happiness, and then our population is down 10% uh, of our 5.9, I guess, uh, for the next year. So because the happiness dropped, our income dropped, so thank God I didn't actually automate this, or I'd have to try to... It's just covered now, but uh, that's 10% of this. So I probably would have to take manual control again. Yes. Grumpy Scam says, ah, food, yes. Yes, I brought lunch. I set them up in the game setup, so yeah, I basically brought lunch. All right, so uh, carry on. So yeah, that sucks. I think we got a, uh, we got that. Yeah, this used to be called the Mysterious Flag. It was just called the Mysterious Flag up until the last couple updates or whatever. Uh, it's now the Shakturi virus, a uh, psionic virus. So plague curing, Shakturi psionic virus, 200%. And it's 11, it's nine years to research this. I don't think it costs anything to queue it up. But I mean, by the time we even get to it, the virus is going to be gone. So I don't know that we need to concentrate on that. I think this will prevent this from infecting us again. Oh, it doesn't cost anything to queue it up. We'll just throw it in the queue. If we get bored researching other stuff, we'll grab it. Ooh. Oh. Ah, crap. I might have to reboot my computer here, guys. Uh, my UPS is just screaming here. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that? Big whiny pitch. I literally have to shut my entire everything down in order to reset it. Um, oh, we're five hours into the stream. Uh, can you hear that, first of all? <clears throat> there was noise cancellation pulling that out. I'm going to pause the game. Uh, nobody's responding. Yeah, this is annoying. Uh, anybody hearing that? Yes? Okay. Um, can you hear me over it? Yeah, okay. Uh, what am I do? Uh, we are at five hours. Maybe I'll just end the stream for today. Kind of sucks. I really didn't want to end it right here, but uh, yeah, I got to It's going to take five or ten minutes for me to shut everything down, bring it back up. So maybe we'll just call it a day, and uh, I'll reboot this. Uh, it's, I don't know. Something uh, draws too much power. Or something I'm not sure what sets that off. It happens once or twice a year. It just happens to be during my live stream. So uh, if you can just put up for with it for a minute, we'll kind of wrap up here. Um, Okay, we got a station under attack. An escort is under attack as well. So we're looking to board that again. Like I said, I'm going to come back and continue this on. Uh, on, a pre on the next uh, stream. So we'll leave it here. Yeah, I've been five hours. So, I think we'll... so let's uh, save that. Uh, I guess all this YouTube. And we'll wrap this up quickly so nobody has to listen to too much of this. That's about all there. So let's just come over here. Uh, let's go to end credits. Let's turn the face cam back on for a sec here. Okay. Yeah, this sucks when this happens. Like I said, it doesn't happen very often, and it just happened to be during the live stream. So. Uh, subscriptions, thank you, hands. That was right at the beginning of the game. I just wanted to run that to make sure I don't miss anybody. So yeah, I'll be back probably maybe not next weekend, but maybe the weekend after. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'll put up a notification a couple of days ahead of time. And uh, we'll come back and we'll uh, continue on with this one. But yeah, I'm having a ton of fun, though. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, well, thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, looking forward to the next stream. Yeah, um, I'll try to make it. Maybe it'll be next weekend. I don't know. We'll see how we feel. I'm not looking to do it every weekend, but uh, for now, we're probably fine. And I do have a pre-recorded coming soon, so watch for that. 
And I think I'm just going to mute my <laughs> mic and uh, call this an end to the stream. So anyway, sorry for the quick departure, but uh, I've got to do what I've got to do with this. So anyways. Awesome. So thanks for being here. This is a ton of fun. I'm kind of enjoying doing this. So chances are I'll be back next weekend. So. Anyways, have a good day, everyone.